really have an effect on either side at this point in time? No, I think the uh, safety is the biggest concern, Randy, and both teams warmed up uh, in a manner that I think is safe, and they're going to keep water uh, for these kids, and we may see some breaks along the way, too, that the officials will allow for hydration uh, here in the football game. Yeah, Hannah won the toss, and they have deferred, so they will be kicking off to Groveport Madison on what is an extremely exciting night here for the folks at Groveport Madison. It's Hall of Fame night as they honor five more inductees into their prestigious Hall of Fame. Bill Alspaugh is going in, Chris Downing, Brandon Johnson, Clarence Royal Jr., and Linda Smittle being honored. I remember Bill Alspaugh, a longtime legendary coach here, and on top of that was an athletic director as well, too, and a guy that used to have the gun at the Fairgrounds Coliseum to stop the basketball contest. And there's Linda Smittle, and there's Clarence Royal Jr., and there's representatives from all five families down there on the field as well, too, and Steve Petros, the Outstanding athletic director, too. And uh, Chris Downing, there's the guy with the uh, tie and the shirt. I remember Chris because he was around for the first year of me doing football some almost 40 years ago. Pretty amazing. And he is coached, in fact, is still coaching softball right now. So it'll be Gehanna Lincoln kicking off with the person of that man, number 90, Brenton Molly, a soccer kid who was injured early last year, returning starter, 6'1 and 165 is the size for Mr. Molly as he gets out there to tee it up. Humidity at 57 percent. I'll tell you this, Jeff, for as warm as it is on the field, it's probably a little warmer in the press box tonight. Plus, we are looking smack dab right into the sun early in this contest, so you have the best seat in the house on the C.W. Columbus. 42-41 last week with Upper Arlington and Reynoldsburg. Can we come close to matching that tonight? Kickoff going from right to left, and we are underway in this contest. And the return is going to start from the 12-yard line up across the 20 to the far side of the 25. And look at the gap to the far side across midfield and all the way down inside the 45-yard line. Jalen Ricks is a guy that can move the football, and he had a good helper there, too, because also back there is Delaney Wilburn, and Wilburn is the guy that got the return that time and has returned across midfield. Take a look one more time, and he takes the zig and zag off to the left-hand side, and Delaney is off to the races. Well, the touchdown save right there being made by number seven, uh, that's Tristan Cookfisher, one of the fastest guys on the football team. He got his job done because that looked like that was going the distance. So, it'll be Groveport Madison on offense to start this contest. And Mark Calhoun was number seven to run the show. The guy that struggled completing passes last week, Jeff O of 80, had three carries for three yards. He was a starting quarterback as a freshman at Independence High School, staying on the east side. So now he gets a nod again as a senior. I had a birthday just two weeks ago. On his home appliance solutions, first down from the 45 of the Golden Lions. And on the first down play, they keep it on the ground. Boy, there's nothing there. They get up to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Great job by the interior of that defense to stop Keon Shaver right at the line of scrimmage. Big number five helping to make the hit on the play for Gahanna Lincoln, and that is Jaden Yates, the linebacker. And there's your offense, too, for the Cruisers. Some good size up front with Kelly and Jackson and Dylan and Joyce and Ramallah and Joyce, by the way, just a freshman playing in that interior of that offensive line. And, of course, we mentioned Shaver in the open of this contest, too, and also we told you about Mark Dale Holmes. They have a wing T look on offense. And they'll toss it, try to take it between the tackles and squirm to the 43-yard line. Again, that was the problem last week is getting some yardage, and that time a short gain for the aforementioned Keon Shaver, who's got the nickname of Debo, defense. And that is a three-man front for Murad Holiday and company with Burns, Rhodes, and Hill up front. Watch those linebackers, very active linebackers. Johnson and Yates really do a great job. And also Alapate Tuatuvuki on the outside, too. Last year, 13 solos and 13 assists for him as well, too. A move in from Utah a couple years ago. Tyree Johnson is a three-year starter. Same for Jaden Yates. So they are strong at linebacker. And it's a third down situation. We'll call it just about seven now from the 42-yard line of Gahanna Lincoln after that great return by Wilburn to start this contest. And a little slashing move inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line, but they're going to be shy of the first down by about three on the play. That's going to bring up an interesting call early in the football game for head coach Mitchell Westcamp. Going to be fourth down in about three or four yards. I think field position going to be critically important in this game. A week ago in their opener against Canal Winchester from an offensive standpoint, they only had two first downs the entire game. Let's see if they're going to go for it, Randy. Fourth down and a long three from right here at the 38-yard line as we're just over two minutes in this contest for Holmes and company. He's got him up to the line. 
Again, they love that wing T look. He's got one to either side right now. One back in the backfield motion. Oh. And a boot, and we're going to have a whistle yeah. before the start of the play. This is going to solve the problem for Coach uh, Westcamp. That's going to be five yards motion. Two guys Dead at the ball. same time. Illegal procedure. Groveport. Groveport. The voice of Dave Pitkin, our referee for this contest tonight. Had a chance to talk to the officials before this game, and we are going with a six-man crew. And there's Matt Bremer, Mike Susi, and Corey Toby, and Josh Phillips, and Dennis Watkins is going to be that center judge, the sixth man of the crew. He's back there on the same side, if you will, just across the field from the referee. So, indeed, Jeff, that is going to set up a punting scenario with the ball back at the 43 of the Lions. Hunter Rathburn gets it off. Fair catch called for. Oh, Ooh, and taken at the four-yard line. I think we lost track of where we were. But, you know, that was a problem last week for Gahanna Lincoln special teams and that they let a couple balls go over their head. They started one drive at the two and wound up in the other possession, yielding a safety. Yeah, that, that is uh, a cardinal rule number one. I mean, you just cannot back up off that 10-yard line and, and field that punt there. 99% of those are going into the end zone, and special teams continue to be a problem for head coach Bruce Ward in his eighth year as the head football coach for the Golden Lions. Aforementioned Maxwell Cummings, who we talked about in the open, who passed for over 100 yards last week with those eight completions on 16 attempts. Likes math, music, and looking at cars. But he's looking right now at a first down at 95 from his own five-yard line. On a long count. And they'll push it out and burrow out to around the eight, maybe the nine-yard line on the play. As that time, they get a nice gain from big number 29. That's Dior Hubbard, the 5'10", 175-pound sophomore. Charles Andrick is the offensive coordinator. They've got some good size in the line. Watch Brendan Raymond as the wide receiver. Three catches for 100 yards and the 82-yard touchdown last week. Good size, too, in that line. Griffin Flushi at right tackle is also a great wrestler as well, too. His dad is a wrestling coach at Gahanna Lincoln. On a second down and six from the nine-yard line to the outside they go, and Cummings has got it, and he's got the first down out near the 19-yard line. And, Jeff, that is one thing I think they want to do. They want to simplify the offense because of the struggles they had last week. And one of the ways to do that is allow the quarterback to keep the ball more often and that's what Cummings does in that play. Picks up the first down as we check out the defense, and that's run by Coley Adabanjo. And you can see the guys up front. Cooper getting a nod tonight. Spencer and Van Barklam up front, along with Seydoux. Linebackers, some good ones there. Gaudier returner. Michael Robinson, the third two. Delaney Wilmer, we saw him with that kick return. And Keller Weston is a guy that's a special student. He's a 4.3 student, and we have a flag on the play. Yeah, they moved it back, Randy. Did not get the call from the official. And we're going to make it a second down and seven as they mark it back inside the 10-yard line to the nine. So Cummings going to roll into the end zone, look to the short side of the field in the pass. It's going to be in. Oh, it is complete. Boy, yeah. there's not much room to traverse there along the sidelines. And the pass is complete on the play. It goes to Brendan Raymond, who makes the catch. Boy, that looked like a very difficult pass to complete, Jeff, because you're rolling to the short side. In fact, he's rolling into the end yeah. zone. But watch how he squares his shoulders up. He does a really good job of getting himself square to the line of scrimmage, delivering a strike, good call by the official, and a terrific reception by Brendan Raymond. And there's what he did last week, including that 82-yard touchdown catch. And he had two feet in that time, only needed one. But from this vantage point, it looked like it was a difficult play, but made it happen and trying to turn the corner. Nothing this time. As they try to get the ball out and got it up to maybe around the 20-yard line is on the carry that time. A big number 29, and that's Hubbard again. Hit made on the play by Rashid Saidu, who's playing on the outside there in the defensive front. Last week had a solo. Last year had a solo and assist. He tore his ACL against Reynoldsburg in week two last year. He's playing tied in, but they move him, Jeff, from defense, or rather from offense to defense, and he's found a home, it looks like, on the outside of that D-line. You could see the respect he had for that big running back coming out there, taking him down low instead of hitting him up on the high end. Good news. The sun is departing. We can almost see. A handoff right up the gut. They go up to the 23-yard line, maybe the 24, and that's about it. Short gain on the play. Once again, it's a heavy dose of Dior Hubbard, 5'10", 175, and a sophomore. Tell you, one guy who's playing great defense already in this contest is Sadu. He's made a couple of hits already, and you know Dior Hubbard is a guy that we thought we'd see a lot of Jalon Williams, but it looks like he's going to alternate with him and perhaps even Chase Clemens getting a chance to carry the ball tonight. Third down. They need a half dozen.
Cummings. Guns downfield, has a man open. Does he stay in bounds along the sidelines? Looking for big number four again. And Brendan Raymond makes the catch along the sidelines. And well, that's another home appliance solution first down. Cummings a week ago, 8 out of 16 for 117. Really looking good here. Throwing on the run, on target, on time to Brendan Raymond. And no pressure, Randy, from that front four of Groveport on the quarterback, Maxwell Cummings. Gain of 26 on the play. First down, mark a right up at midfield from the 50-yard line. Keeping the ground again off the right side and rugby breaking out on the play after gaining about three for Hubbard. Hubbard a guy, four carries, 19 yards. Last week, hardest kid to tackle, they say, in the program, Jeff, too. Shifty, good vision, but again, a youngster, too, as just a sophomore. A lot of sophomore running backs and quarterbacks in this contest tonight. Yeah, last week's game against Mason, they lost in their game 15-7, to did uh, Gehanna Lincoln. 186 yards of total offense in that game against Mason. 117 through the air, just 69 rushing. And Randy, only one of nine on third downs in that game. They look a lot better tonight, a little bit more in sync from an offensive standpoint. You'll never tell by the facial expressions of Bruce Ward. He's always a stern guy out there along the sidelines. They pick up four in that first down play. To the near side they go, and they'll get it inside the 45, down to around the 43 before Hubbard is knocked down on the play. Solid defense that time by big number two on the play for the Cruisers and Delaney Wilburn, who makes the hit. And Wilburn is the guy that plays strong safety. They actually have two strong safeties they put out there. He's out there along with uh, Jace Ninshelzer. Yeah, he's glorified linebacker stepping up in there to make the play. And Delaney Wilburn's a young man that uh, certainly going to play this game at the next level. A second team All-Ohio player back in 2020. 5'11", 190 pounds, Randy. He's going to be on somebody's radar. He was at free last year. They move him to strong this year. Third down, they need about four. Cummings saw the quick out pattern, has his man, has the first down, and ridden down right at the 25-yard line. So the connection's made again. And obviously, he's got a favorite now in Brendan Raymond. And i got to tell you something. I look at Cummings, too, and he's a junior quarterback. But, man, he's got a rifle for an arm, doesn't he? He really does. He delivers it. And, and again, this is a timing pattern. That ball's got to be gone before that break is even made. So you got to like the communication and the chemistry between that quarterback and that receiver. Both teams would love a slow, methodical drive early in this contest just to prove they can put something together offensively. We mentioned that combined, they only had 10 points between the two of them. They've moved the sticks at the 35-yard line now, coming with the blitz right up the middle, and they come right through on the delay. There's a little opening, but then looks like Hubbard lost his balance right near the 32-yard line. Boy, it almost looked like they uh, got there a little early. Well, the timing of the blitz was absolutely perfect. Did not break the plane before the ball was snapped. Right, you're going to see it right here. Here's the pressure, and he's able to sidestep the blitz and get into the secondary. Had he not slipped on that inside foot, that ball might have gone the distance. Gain of three on the play. Charles Andrick, the offensive coordinator. Before that was at Brookhaven and Beechcroft, the Brookhaven grad as well, too. He was uh, friendly enemies in the past with Bruce Ward when they coached at different schools in the City League, but also good friends as well. Pressure on Cummings, rolling, trying to create something. Dumps at the last minute down the sidelines, inside the 25. Nice spin move all the way down inside the 20 near the 17-yard line as the catch is made on the play by Jake Barton, the tight end. Well, you got to be impressed with the way Maxwell Cummings is running this offense. Talk about improv. He is blitzed here. Pressure. Watch how he unloads his football. This looks a little bit like Patrick Mahomes. A push shot, chest pass, able to get it to his receiver. A pretty impressive start. An official's timeout on the field. This may be one of the water breaks that we were leading to. That was kind of like the Utah pass, Lee Gross Cup, except it was outside <laughs> of the tackle. <laughs> Time now to check out the Honda's keys to the game. All offensive keys this week, and we'll start with Gehanna Lincoln. Jalon on. They need a good game from Jalon Williams, the running back, to keep things going. And Cummings and Goings, well, we've seen Maxwell Cummings already perform very well, and that is a key to their success on offense for the Golden Lions. On the other side for Groveport Madison, play well, Markel. That is Mr. Holmes, the quarterback. They need the senior to lead the team. And Shaver Cuts talking about the aforementioned Keon. He's got that bulk and size, Jeff, but the one thing you have to do is you can run into contact sometimes, but when you have the opportunity, try to avoid it, make your cuts, and make a bigger play than a three or four yard game. 
Yeah, we talked about it in our game last week. Uh, my old coach, Woody Hayes, used to tell us that you had to become your own blocker, BYOB. You had to make people miss downfield. And running them over at times is, is certainly okay, but if you're going to make big plays, you got to make people miss downfield, especially when you get in the open field. Coley Adebanjo trying to exhort on his 4-2-5 base defense there, and they've got the ball inside the 20-yard line after that gain to Barton on the play, down to around the 18-yard line. The catch was good for a grand total of 14 yards it's on the first down play. They're going to keep it on the ground. Nothing there. The defense stands it up. Great job of staying at home that time. As Big 26 came shooting through the gap that time for the Cruisers to make the hit. Coming up from the secondary, that is Jace Nitzhelzer. Last week, a solo six assists and two fumble recoveries last week. Yeah, read by the quarterback. Looked like he should have probably kept the football at that point because they left one unblocked. That was Cameron Spencer, the big defensive tackle, 6'1", 320, just a junior making the play. So... A loss of a few on the play. We'll call it three. They need 13 from just past the 20-yard line. Looking left. Looking long downfield to left. And overthrows the receiver in the end zone about five yards deep. That was big Josh Cooker. And Josh is a guy with a good frame, 6'6", six, six, and 203 pounds. Well, you wondered when they were going to go knocking on that door because he's the guy that they just want to throw it up and let him go get it. And Maxwell Cummings is going to look at the tape on this one on Monday and going to be sick to his stomach. He had Josh Cooker wide open for the touchdown. Don't be surprised if they don't come back knocking on that same door sometime real soon. Yeah, it's tough to overthrow a guy that's 6'6". Six, six. Third down and 13. Trips to the top. Cummings rolling that way. Maxwell, plenty of time on the out pattern. Nice adjustment to the football that time at the five-yard line by Raymond. Well, you can sense that chemistry, can't you, Jeff? I mean, it's early in the contest, but sometimes a quarterback will click with a receiver. They did it three times last week. They've done it at least three times so far in this contest. And a little trash talking going on at the end of the play, and this is a ball that is delivered to a spot, and the receiver does a great job of keeping the defensive back on his rear end so he can't come through him to get the ball. That was an excellent job by Brendan Raymond making himself available to his quarterback. Gain of 16. You've mentioned this about other players, but indeed another guy in Brendan Raymond who will play on the next level next year. So first and goal, mark the ball at the four-yard line. Power set to the right, and they lose the handle. The ball's free, and the Cruisers think they have it. They do inside the three-yard line. Groveport's got the football in the breadbasket of big number 26, Mr. Nintzhelzer. So let's check this out. He's got three fumble recoveries and a block kick already in the first five quarters of the season. You know, it's pretty amazing. One turnover a week ago for Gehanna Lincoln. It was a fumble. This ball never got into the breadbasket of the running back. And that's the responsibility of the back to be able to make sure he gives him a good pocket. But the quarterback has got to deliver that thing so that he can keep his eyes going forward. And the one key, Randy, to think about is that this Groveport Madison defense did a terrific job last week in their loss against uh, Canal Winchester. They delivered four turnovers to their offense. Unfortunately, the offense could do nothing with them. Well, Gahanna had a first and 95, and now it's a first and 97 for the Cruisers. <laughs> I guess that's even, right? That's right. Just about two yards may vary. So let's see what they go to offensively on this first down play again with that tight wing T set. Blitz coming. They try to find a little gap to the left side, and they'll push the pile, push the pile out to maybe the six-yard line. So a gain of just about three on the play. It'll be second down and seven from there. So they come up with a nice gain on first down. And coming out of that pile with the football, big number 23 for the Cruisers, and that is Keon Shaver. Well, I mean, did you go 5'8", 220 as a sophomore? I never got to two bills. <laughs> Not a chance. If I'd, have, if I'd have had two bills on this body, that would give me a 60 number. There was no way that was going to happen. Young man who had 18 carries last year for 46 yards and a couple of touchdowns, a long of nine. And they'll keep it on the ground again, and this time they'll get it out to around the eight-yard line. So a short gain on that second down play. Great stop by Kamari Burns, the defensive end, number 40. Here's a kid that's 6'4", 250, just a junior. And you got to believe that he's going to grow into that body a little bit. It, it, you know, at 6'4", 250, playing that defensive end position, he's got a chance to have an impact. And we've got an injured player on the field, and we're going to take a break. That's right. We are scoreless. 249 left to go in the first. You are watching Honda's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus.
Hey, what's up, guys? This is Jonathan Cooper, formerly of the Buckeyes and Lincoln High School, and now with the Denver Broncos. I'd like to wish my school the best of luck on Friday Night Rivals. Go Lions! Jonathan, thank you very much. Boy, we had a chance to see him, it seemed like, for about five years. Again, I'm thinking, right, this guy was such a force. And, of course, continue that into his college years right down the street. Yeah, terrific. They can be really proud of what he has done. Uh, center got injured on the play. It was Cameron Dillon, uh, the starting center for Groveport. Uh, obviously, you are concerned on third down about getting a good exchange between a backup center and your quarterback. So I think 74 may come in. Devin Laga, 6'2", 340, and a junior. He's got good size. The one thing they're working on with him is just to be more aggressive, a strong, immediate blocker, if you will, once he snaps that ball. So that big man, just a junior, coming in to snap it on a crucial down here. On a third down, and they need just about four to move the sticks one more time. Getting at the wing to either side. Holmes looking, going down the line, throwing and passing complete. Intended receiver. Around the 25-yard line on the play for Coport Madison was Jalen Rick. So, yeah. punting scenario now for the Cruisers. Yeah, third and long out of the comfort zone of this offense, Randy. Watching this wing tee makes me think back to uh, some of the great wing tee offenses you and I have seen over the last, you know, uh, 20 years or so. And what immediately comes to my mind would be Brian White over at... Uh, at, at Hillier Davidson. You think of some others? I think of uh, Brookhaven as well, too. The good. Greg Miller era as well, too. Grove yeah. City had some good wing tee teams as well, too, down through the years. But, yeah, those were tremendous teams that they had. So a putting situation again for Hunter Rathburn. Returning start last week, averaged 32 yards. Last year, 30.1. And he sails on now. Raymond calling for the fair catch. He called for it at the 44, but didn't catch it until way inside the 40-yard line. They put the little marker down to the 44. Live stream sponsored by Kroger Great Lakes Distribution Center. Yeah, they've made it so easy to watch Honda's Friday Night Rivals every week. Thanks to Kroger Great Lakes Distribution Center, every game is available on air, online, and on every device. Tonight's game is streaming live on the ABC6 YouTube channel, the ABC6 News app, and on the CWColumbus.com. And if that isn't enough, it is always available on your television right here on the CW Columbus. We are everywhere. You look left, you look right, you look downtown, suburbs. You can't miss us. Uh, there was a team that just barely missed on their prior drive, Jeff, because they had that ball to the handling and lines inside the 10-yard line. So now they start from the 43. The late handoff, and there's a gap. And there goes Hubbard. He's across midfield, puts his shoulder down, and gets to the 45 and gets a first down on the play. Boy, the future is bright for the running game of Gehanna. This is just a sophomore, Dior Hubbard, 5'10", 175 pounds. They believe that he's maybe the hardest guy on the team to tackle. He's just young, though, and still finding his way. But look at the vision and his ability to keep his pads low and get the first down. He's got the cuts. Nice gain on the play of 11. First and 10 from the 45. Looks like the old H-back shuffle, if you will, and Hubbard now going to take it off the right side. I don't know what it is about his shoulder pads, but it makes him look like he's about 220, doesn't it? <laughs> Especially when he finds that little gap towards the line and puts one shoulder down and brings the other one back up again. He runs, it looks like, bigger than he actually is. He's got a big future ahead of him and got a good offensive line up there to rely upon, too. Uh, those starting uh, guards up there, Declan, Hitty, John Vandemark, Lamont Rhodes in there at center. Good offensive line. And Isaac Perkins, a two-year starter at the left tackle. You mentioned Vandemark as well, too. J.J., right guard, a 5'10", 200-pound senior. Picked up a couple on that first down play. Second and eight from the 43. One man in motion from bottom to top now in Kane Baker. I think that's the fourth Baker we've seen of the Baker boys. And the quick pop underneath, pass is complete. It goes to Hubbard out of the backfield, and he stretches a good second effort to get the first down. we got a player that got... Kicked in the midsection for Groveport. Let's see if he gets up slow to his feet yep. along the 38-yard line. Randy, they're third and three if we don't get this extra effort here by Hubbard out of the backfield. I want you to watch how good a job he does of recognizing where he is on the field, delivers a blow, spin, and able to find that first down. That is something you do not expect out of a sophomore running back. Very impressive. And even from this angle, you can see Cummings checking downfield, too, looking at a couple different options before he found Hubbard for the first down at the 35, under a minute left to go in the first. And this time, calls his own number. And nice little move inside the 32 down to the 31-yard line before he's knocked down on the play. Quentin Cooper helping to make the hit and checking out this contest now, looking a little 
tender with that arm is Delaney Wilburn. He's yeah. a guy they can't afford to lose in the secondary. Looks like he might have had a stinger there in that left arm. Pinch nerve coming to the sidelines. Training staff will get to him. Second down, just five, Randy. Let's see if this is an opportunity to get the ball downfield. Partners to the top, and they're going to send three that way. And it'll be a running play by Cummings. He's got a nice gap inside the 25 to the 21 yard line, and he's got a first down with just over seven seconds left to go in stands at number one. Yeah, this was quarterback run from the get go, and they were able to get behind the offensive line. Good push up front. And that'll do it for the first quarter. Nice glide on the play by Cummings, and we've seen this before. Can Hannah Lincoln threatening? Can they convert this time? Fun night of football action in week number two, scoreless after 12 minutes on Honda's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Columbus State Community College, right here on the CW Columbus. Ohio Education Association is proud to recognize Central Ohio's Scholar Athlete of the Week. Kane Baker is captain of the football team and a three-year varsity starter for Gahanna Lincoln High School. He has been on the honor roll for three years and has a 3.9 GPA. Kane volunteers for the second and seven youth football camp and Gahanna Bridges, where he assists families in the community move furniture. Congratulations to this outstanding Ohio Education Association Scholar Athlete. Fourth in the line of the fabulous Baker boys. There was Blake, Kale, Luke, and Kane. And yet, there's one more brother yet to matriculate through the Gahanna Lincoln school system. So, nice quarter. Jeff's going to update a couple of numbers for you in just a second on this first down play just past the 21 yard line. Little toss back. Would they throw it back? No. They're going to take the corner and get inside the 15, the 10, and look at Baker. He heard his number called, I think, during that spot and gets it inside the five, and that's what he can do. Three-year starter, possession receiver, but he has an eye for the opening on the football field. His dad and four brothers, we mentioned, all great athletes, and you can see it's in the blood. Yeah, a little bit of their own medicine. This is uh, their wing tee. They're bringing the wing back around, giving him the ball on the pitch and letting him take it down, and Baker, a nose for the goal line. In that first quarter, throwing the ball, Maxwell Cummings, great start. Six out of seven for 85 yards. Rushing the football, Dior Hubbard, nine carries for 27 yards, and Brendan Raymond, four catches for 58. And now it's a first and goal at the four yard line. Cummings to Hubbard, not a whole lot there. Maybe diagonally got inside the four to around the three, and that's about it before he's knocked down on the play. Second down and goal. Remember last time, this is where the wheels came off, or I guess maybe you could say the Lions got something in their paw there and could not get it extricated and gave up the football. So now it'll be second down and goal. They're going to put it maybe a length of the football close to the goal line, so second down and goal from the four-yard line. You know, limited amount of opportunities in the red zone. you got to take advantage of them. They failed, as you mentioned, Randy, inside the five-yard line in quarter number one. Let's see if it's Hubbard time again. It is. Around the left side. Does he break the play? He does. Touchdown. Count it. 10.55 left to go. And Hubbard, the sophomore, gets his first touchdown 
of his career to make it six to nothing. And there's another Ramos roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761 roof. Take a look one more time. Yeah, I think the future is bright for this young man getting an opportunity to become the star running back in that backfield. Got himself going square north and south. Good push by the offensive line, but if you're a young running back watching, you notice how he got himself square. He didn't run diagonal of that to that goal line. He ran straight towards it. Extra point time for the Lions, and the kick is up by Dallas Gerhart, and he converts. And he's 5'10", 145 in a junior, it's third year. And just like that, it is seven nothing in this contest. And now, a quick word for Ever Dry Waterproofing. For a company to claim it's the industry leader in anything, it better be able to back it up. When it comes to basement waterproofing, Ever Dry Waterproofing has over 42 years and 90,000 satisfied customers to support its claim. With its lifetime warranty, Ever Dry has a solution for any basement water damage in Ohio. Basement water problems are serious and happen to a lot of homes. It's good to know there's one company that'll be around as long as you are, Ever Dry Waterproofing. Remember, it's not dry until it's ever dry. And Gahanna Lincoln denning the scoreboard, going nine plays, 56 yards, and 336 off the clock. And Jeff, they're one of two now inside the red zone as they convert for that touchdown. And there's some numbers on Dior Hubbard already in this contest. And he does look very effective. And if Williams or Clemens are half as good as that guy, look out, they are going to be very deep at running back. Yeah, they feel pretty good about their depth over there, but obviously Dior Hubbard is the go-to guy early in this football game. Jalen Williams, a starter there, number 25, 5'6", 165, a senior. And then there's another junior running back, as you mentioned, Chase Clemens. Here's the boot, and the return going to start from the nine-yard line. Nice gap right to middle. Rick's looking for an opening. Can't fully extend. It looked like Jalen had a chance, but he just grabbed him by the ankles as he tried to extend the leg and get away at around the 47-yard line. But another great return for Groveport Madison, their second good return in this contest. He's a wide receiver and a cornerback on defense, plays both sides, and now here he is doing a kick return. Now watch his vision here as he allows it to happen in front of him and takes advantage of it, nearly beats the kicker. The kicker was able to slow him down, or that thing goes for a touchdown. Very impressive. So it is 32 yards on the return. It'll be make that 42 yards on the return. First and 10 from the 49-yard line for the offense of the Cruisers led by Markel Holmes, the six foot 180 pound senior. I wonder if he's going to get a chance to run more because that set up some things for Cummings on the Kahana Lincoln side of things. Going to hand it off and they push and churn and get two on the play and that's about it. Tag team tackle right there. As that time on the carry for Coport Madison is CJ Curtis Barnett Jr. CJ last week, five carries, eight yards. Last year, 18 carries for 90 yards and also one catch for six. He's also a wrestler as well, too. Transferred to Groveport his sophomore year. At 5'8", 145, and a junior. Not the size, if you will, of Shaver, but one of those two wingbacks that can have out there, Barnett or Sawyer. They could even go with Morgan as well, too, and Robinson. So gain down to the... 47-yard line, pick up about three on the play. Second out from there, two minutes into the second quarter. Holmes wanting to throw, looking, gunning, and the pass incomplete the far side of the field and around the 35-yard line. Looking on the play for 22, that is Kelvin Woodfork. You know, a week ago, Randy, they had difficulty. They had no passing yards in their game against Canal Winchester. But the coach said they had three or four drops that were just easy catches. So it's not the, fu the fault of the quarterback delivering the ball in many cases, but it's the receivers, uh, you know, being able to catch it. That's where you got to build the confidence. Yeah. And that's what the kids said after the game. They said, coaches, you know what? You guys did a great job. We didn't make the plays. You called a great game. We need to execute better. And that speaks to the maturity level of your players if they come in there and say that to you. So third down, big play for the Cruisers. Down by a touchdown with the ball at the 47 of the Golden Lions. Home straight back to throw. Looking long downfield, has a man, can he run under it? He cannot, so close on the play at around the 10 yard line. And on the play looking for Jaden Sawyer and he was open. Well, they believe that he's their best offensive weapon and they got him open. 
with nobody around, and Markel Holmes was getting pressure up the middle, and unable to deliver that ball. And you know that's a good job of get, putting some air underneath it when you see a guy that wide open. But even if he has to come back to the football, you've got to make sure your young man's got a chance to catch the ball, and that's going to bring up a punt formation. And Jeff, that's the danger of saying a wing back because you think of a plotting offense sometimes, <laughs> but those wings, especially when they go that size at 145, can zip downfield as well too. Rathburn with his third punt so far in the first half. It is high, and they're not going to get anywhere near it. It goes out of bounds. They couldn't catch that if they wanted to as it heads out of bounds. And now the Lions will get it back. 9.42 left to go here in the first half. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll go down to Miles Harris for the Music Go Round Coach's Corner to hear from the leading coach in this contest for his thoughts on the first half. Music Go Round is ready to help you with all your instrument needs at any of their locations. 2630 Bethel Road and Gehanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza. Check them out. Music go round. And I have checked them out and used them. And they have great equipment. But even better than that, they have superb people. So it's now a first down and 10 again for the Lions, who have to be a little more cocky on offense, you would think, Jeff. Well, I think they've, uh, they've, they've got some confidence. I expect them to go back to the big number 84, six foot six receiver, Josh Cooker. Let's see if they go back. Reline the offense now. Go with a pair to the bottom on a long count. Handed off and the ball's dropped. Was that a little shovel pass? Very fortunate to have yeah. that ball come right back up to him. And looked like a, some miscommunication trying to get people lined up exactly where they wanted them. Intended for Amir Simmons. Take a look at this one more time. There's the little yeah. shovel. Shovel pass, ball drops on the ground, and very fortunate that it was able to come back up. Now, Randy, that's shovel pass like that. I'm thinking that's incomplete. That is indeed. It's a passing play, so it's yeah. now second out of ten. Once it hit the turf, no. ball goes two directions, forward or backwards. Yep, had no possession of the ball. All right, looking. Cummings, quick pop, and there you go, Jeff. There's the big guy at 6'6", and he's got speed. Oh, Look at him break away. Down the sideline, 6'6", six, six and 200. That is a runaway train, and he takes it 80 yards for the Ramos roofing touchdown. Who's going to stop that guy? I'll tell you. He's a, you know, he passes the look test because of his 6'6", six 200-pound six, size, but I had no idea that this young man's got wheels to go with it. Last year, 2020, midseason, broken collarbone. He was unable to complete the season. Look at the moves here. And this is a runaway train. This is really good, man. This is awesome. I've got to read you a quote from the coaches after this play <laughs> that we are then going to destroy right after this. Gearhart for the extra point now make it 14-0 with 926 left to go. Snap, kick, plenty of leg. It is up. It's good. Here's a quote from the coaches. Great hands, great receiver, maybe not the speed to play outside all the time. <laughs> Wrong. There's his numbers. And we'll take a break. 14-0 right here at the CW Columbus. Guys, we're out here at Le'Veon Bell Field, and there's a special message we have out here for Randy. Girls. Happy birthday, Randy, guys. 
Jesus. My kids look better every day. Oh, how good is that? Thank you very much. 65 years old. I've got to say it because I'm allowed to. And I've got a presentation. If we can get our camera on up here um, in the uh, press box. I've got a, you might read this. This is his uh, Medicare card. I was called by the uh, government to deliver it personally to Randy. Congratulations, my friend. Watch this. <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies down there, too. Miles, you never look so good. But you know what? Those ladies Happy carry birthday, the show. Bud. Thank Happy you very birthday. much. I've never felt better. I don't think. I can't remember. Yeah. That's the one thing the memory goes. But one thing I do remember is that was a great, great pass play to Cucker to take it the distance for the touchdown. And now you look at the numbers for coming. Seven of nine passing, 165 Ooh. yards. And a touchdown, and look at this. Can they fall on it? Free it around the 36-yard line. Boy, a hot potato down there, and it looks like... Hannah uh, Lincoln says they have it. Let's wait till they unsort the pile. I think that's wishful, nope. wishful thinking yeah, it by is. the white jerseys. You know, we should mention one thing here, that I may have turned that magical age, but someone here is, to my right is actually older than I am. Yeah, by a few months, uh, I had the opportunity. Watch this ball. And we'll get back to that. This thing gets loose. Got to cover it up. Somebody get on the football, and you can see right there it was loose for a second. You know, I presented you your uh, your fake Medicare card up here. I woke up on my birthday in January, turned 65, and found out that my daughter had put a sign in our front yard that's that basically told the world that Jeff was Medicare age. So yes, I had it in my garage door. It beats the alternative though. Randy, I also got not getting to Medicare that's age. That's true. I also had 65 <laughs> birthday cards awaiting me too. So thank you to everybody Beautiful. who sent those too. So it's nice to know that. I've made it this far. First and ten. Groveport needs an answer. They need an elixir. Jeff, if nothing else, they need a drive as well, too. Let's go back down to Miles causing more trouble. What's going on, Miles? Yeah, there's a little bit of tension and frustration over here on Groveport Madison's sideline here. They're really trying to calm down. Really wrong, here you can the the passing game. Hopefully, uh, Groveport Madison can do the same here later on in this game. Thank you, Miles, for everything, by the way. And I think that's the thing confidence is needed right now for yeah. Markel Holmes. He just needs to get one under his belt, I think. He's got the arm. He's got the presence back there, too. And I really think that if they can free him up, he can run to the outside as well. They pick up three. They need seven more as we're under nine minutes left to go in the first half. Power to near side, although that's going to shift. Sawyer in motion. He's going to get the handoff and get up to the 40-yard line. That's about it. Boy, the Gahanna defense does a great job of staying at home, Jeff. You know, they don't panic or anything like that. They stay, and especially if they can push you between the tackles and pinch the inside, they're going to do that. Well, and most defenses are practicing each week in preparation for spread. And this is a new thing, having to go up against a wing tee. And you got to spend some time with all of your keys and everything. And they're going to, they're going to bunch it up, and they're going to try and force that team to try and run outside. Because in a wing T, you're trying to get creases right up the middle to, to be able to hit a home run. And right now, Gahanna's giving him no room at all. You saw Kamari Burns, big number 40, making the hit who likes Star Wars, the guitar, and the saxophone on a third down play. And look at this gap, and look at the speed and the acceleration through the gap, down the sideline to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, and do we hit the pylon? One yard line. Oh, ho, ho. just about able to take it in on the play. Curtis Barnett nearly takes it the distance. You shoot for that pylon, and many times you think if you hit it, you've got the touchdown. But that time, a gain of 58. Great. Those are the scenes that I'm talking about. You're not trying to run around the ends. You're trying to get a seam right up the middle. And that time, they were able to find that crease and a touchdown saving tackle right down at the one yard line. What an effort by Curtis Barnett. Not a big kid by any stretch. That was really close to being a touchdown. Time taken on the field as he gets down to just inside the one yard line. I just got a note from former head coach at Coport Madison, our buddy Tom McDonald saying, I thought you were 55. So Tom, thanks for lying. What a great guy Tom McDonald is. Oh, what a legend he was as well too. More to come in 30 seconds, but first, this message from First Scores on Fox 28.
first scores on Fox 28, sponsored by Spectrum, tonight at 1045. All right, if you're Groveport Madison now, you want to make sure everything goes smoothly. They've seen a little self-destruction early by Hannah Lincoln giving up a touchdown opportunity. They need to try to push it in now from the one-yard line for the Cruisers, just past the one on a first down and goal, under eight left to go. And the handoff, boy, not a whole lot there. Can you back your way across the goal line? They're still fighting, churning, and I don't think she ever made it. Yeah, Kamari Burns from that defensive end position, number 40, right there to make the play. and. This is frustrating, I know, for Groveport. They have yet to score a touchdown in five quarters this season. Hey, here we are in the second quarter of game number two, and you can again see the pressure there. Good extra effort, but Kamari Burns just too strong. There he is. Good length there, Randy. Look at the, I mean, it's long. 6'4", 250, yep. And will grow into that body. Reminds me a little bit of Jonathan. We, we were talking about uh, Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. You know, it. it, it young body uh, with the ability to be able to grow into it might be an impact player in the future. They better snap in a hurry. They snap it just in time to hand off and they break the plane and they get the touchdown. Boy, the back judge was down under one and they get the touchdown just in time. They take it in for the score in the person of it looks like Jayon King who takes it in yep. for the touchdown. Alapate Tua Tabaki came in there to try and make the play defensively from that linebacker spot. Watch number 22 come up to try and make the play right there at the end. But the plane was already broken. You get a great shot at 22 coming in from there. Tua Tabaki not unable to make the play. A young man that's been a force for Gahanna Lincoln on defense the last couple of seasons. So extra point time now for William Morgan Jr. who made a 35 yard field goal their own tally last week that lost to Canal Winchester snap there's the kick and it is up and it's good so Groveport with the answer the huge play down the sidelines in the person of Barnett and with the touchdown and the extra point they've cut it to seven points now with 649 left to go in the first half and I think there's probably an alumnus of Groveport Madison High School that's probably smiling somewhere right now Hi, this is Calvin Booth, General Manager of the Denver Nuggets and proud Groveport Madison grad. I want to wish my school good luck on Rivals Night. Go Cruisers! There's a man I always looked up to in Calvin Booth. <laughs> to this day, literally, I still do, yes. Literally. Oh, what a force he was inside. Boy, there were so many fun teams they had back here when it came to basketball as well, too. Remember the time they had three Hairstons on the team? I think it was Carrie and Terry and Paul. All played for Coach John Fusel. Five plays, 63 yards. There's your, your answer if you're a Groveport Madison. 233 off the clock. They cut it to one touchdown. And that's their first score of the season. They had a field goal in their first game against uh, Canal Winchester. Canal Winchester, yeah. but uh, were not able to get the ball across the goal line. So, uh, what Miles was talking about down there, trying to get some confidence for your quarterback, Markel Holmes, that he's the right guy to be leading this football team. He's got to feel Miles a little bit better about himself right now. Morgan ready to boot it. The return to start from the 13 yard line. And the spin move up to the 25 on the play for Romero Wells. So a nice return out to the 25. Let's see which team now takes advantage of what they've done recently here. Groveport Madison looking to play some solid defense and Gahanna Lincoln showing the ability to move the football. I gotta turn off my phone. <laughs> a lot of birthday wishes. Too many now. birthday wishes, huh? Uh, commentary on my Calvin Booth thing. I see what you've done there for my good buddy Tom. So mark it officially at the 26-yard line. What's going well offensively for Gehanna Lincoln, Jeff, for the latecomers? Well, Randy, I think that uh, this team is building confidence through their quarterback, and Maxwell Cummings is doing a good job of delivering the football. You see his number seven out of nine. He was six out of seven in the first quarter, 165 yards and a touchdown. And his receivers are doing a terrific job of getting open and presenting themselves to their quarterback. You know he likes Raymond. He's going downfield. Jump ball and incomplete. Had a man at the 38-yard line. That was a perfect pass on the play and just in and out of the hands of Tristan Cook Fisher. You talked about a speed burner there. There's another one in that young man who uh, ran in the 400 and 800 of the state runner-up track team last year. Yeah, these guys were uh, four by one and four by two team in the state championship and this was one of those guys you can see the frustration looked like he tried to adjust to the ball just a little bit too early Randy 
and kind of got you know stumbled a little bit in trying to catch the football and they'll go back and knock on that door again I promise he's getting some D2 looks and a guy that came in from the Sandusky area a couple years ago so nothing on the first play it'll be second down and 10 and a timeout going to be taken by Gahanna Lincoln with 638 left to go here in the first half of this contest each team coming in with a mark of 0 and 1 and we're playing on the G theme in the open. If you wonder, that's why we call it the OGG instead of the OCC because you had Gahan and Groveport as well, too. With that being said, we have a little reminder we'd like to share with the rest of the class as halftime approaches. Be sure to stay tuned for the Capital City Concrete Halftime Show. Miles Harris puts the Ohio Education Association spotlight on a most valuable teacher who was inducted into the Groveport Madison Hall of Fame earlier tonight. A really inspiring man who bleeds red and black, and you'll want to meet him. That's all coming up in the Capital City Concrete Halftime Show. Get a beautiful new concrete driveway by calling Capital City Concrete 614-371-9886 or visiting capcityconcrete.com. Jeff, are you going to get a concrete driveway for your new mansion? <laughs> if you're going to pay for it. I'm sure. Maybe no I problem. can maybe I can get a sponsorship there with the name, image, and likeness program. What do you think? Do you I, think you think, I think I'm eligible for NIL still? I think you are. <laughs> no, actually, I think nil is probably more appropriate. <laughs> Second and ten with 6:38 left to go to half. Cummings very patient. A little dump. Nice screen across the middle. And up to the 30, and undercut right at the 31-yard line. Although the running back doesn't think so. That's Chase Clements, who says, continue to chase me. There's a guy, too, that's a great athlete, plays baseball and basketball. That's a guy that didn't play last year because of COVID concerns. Little bubble screen. Good opportunity. Got some blocking downfield and was able to jitterbug himself around. But there was where the knee went down. He tried to make a bigger play out of it. But third down and... Five. I don't think they have punted yet, have they, Randy? No, he's a great baseball player, too. Good outfielder. Although I didn't see him smile in any picture. We've got to get that kid to smile. Flags on the play. Dump underneath the pass, a little low, but caught, and they'll get it out to around the 34 yard line. And it is into the breadbasket of Jake Barton making his second catch. But we'll see if Mr. Pitkin and company are going to bring it back, and we'll get the call from down the field. Illegal motion. Gehanna. And that is your referee again tonight, Dave Pickton. The back that was in motion actually turned upfield before the ball was snapped. That's why they called it. You wonder if they're going to decline this penalty and bring up fourth down. I don't know that I would want to give Maxwell Cummings another throw at it, but maybe they're afraid that they would go for it on fourth and three. Yeah, that's, that could be the scenario. As Bruce Ward. Down the sidelines, eighth year, 45-year-old head coach, supervisor for the Digital Academy and Credit Recovery. Five years before that as the Beechcroft head coach, eight years now at Gahanna Lincoln. A Portsmouth High School grad back in 94, and I believe he went to Fairmont State. So third down, they need just more than 10. Bringing up somebody from the secondary, now they back it off. Cummings, backside, looks on the out pattern, a little too strong on the play at the 37-yard line. That ball never came out of his hand the nope. way that he wanted to, Randy. It looked like a wounded duck coming over to the sideline. They're trying to go again to Brendan Todd, or excuse me, Brendan Raymond. So it pays off for the Cruisers to take that penalty, push him back a little bit, and now force a punting situation. Watch how the ball comes out here. It just came out sloppy. Well, moisture tonight, Jeff. I yeah. mean, it is humider than humid. I'm surprised you can get any kind of grip on the football tonight. I mean, you and I just talk about sweat and we're rolling around here in the water. But you know what? It's turned out to cool down a little bit. With the sun gone, it's made it uh, a lot nicer here in central Ohio. Groveport struggling getting the uh, enough players on the field for punt protection. Scott, I almost thought he was going to roll with it and take it, but it's kind of a rugby style. It's going to hit inside the 40. Oh, scooped Great up at the 33-yard line. Yeah. I almost think the Bricks was surprised that he got the handle out there rapidly, but... Nice return of a couple, but saves a loss of about 10 as Jalen Scott helps make the hit on the play. And, of course, remember his brother, Jay Sean, was killed in a car accident a couple years ago. His number was actually a part of their logo last year. So they honor that young man. And we're just, you know, so honored to be able to cover these kids. I was asked by Clay Hall. He said, 39 years, you had your birthday. I said, Clay, it keeps us young. And these kids are faster. And they're smarter. That's the key I want to make. They are smarter than we ever were. We can be as cocky as we want to be. 
but these kids know so much more and quite honestly they've had to put up with so much in their young lives already too that the way that most of them have adjusted I think is miraculous you know and I know they recognize when games are on television especially a live telecast like we're bringing you tonight and the crowds that are the fans that are listening and watching these games I got to tell you and obviously we had a terrific game as we see a short game there a week ago with the 42 41 come from behind twice victory by Upper Arlington but Randy the number of people that I saw on Saturday morning varied all over I mean just continued yeah. people that I didn't know were going to be watching those games were like was that the greatest game I've ever you know they just loved it and and loved the telecast loved the fact that Upper Arlington uh, never got themselves down after being you know literally down by three touchdowns twice in that game and Carson Grisak rushing for as much as he did that contest too, including a big run and they score with 23 seconds left to win it oh on a second out play great penetration I tell you what he won't get credit for the tackle but shooting through was number 32 that was Jabez Hill who blew up that play the defensive end last year 15 solos two assists and a tackle for a loss but he was stellar on that play he just blew that whole thing up before he got going two year starter but he's been on the varsity all four years Jeff yeah he's a guy that has been uh, a key part of their defense and watch again he comes through unblocked nearly just totally beats his man at the line of scrimmage he was over top of the tight end Antoine Walter and Walter just kind of whooped on him and he was able to make the play and Dylan Scott with the cleanup at the end of the play there so it's going to be third down now for the cruisers to drive after they scored on a touchdown with 410 left to go third down they're back to just about the original line of scrimmage they still need 10 for Markel Holmes and company. Wow, did he get just tackled on the play? Big number five just came in and just jumped on his back. That is Jaden Yates, another strong linebacker, plays the will last year, who's in on 17 solos, six assists, three year starter as a junior, yep. second team all district. His dad, Max, actually made it up to the Minnesota Vikings on October the 10th, 2004. Uh, but it just comes through, and there's great pressure here. He is a young man that's got a great future ahead of him, just a junior, 6'2", 215. Missed two games last year due to an injury, uh, but a young man that's obviously got a great bloodline, but he's got, more importantly, he's got a high IQ for the football game, a lot of it uh, because of his father playing in the league. And a lot more here than his dad, too. You've heard that before, Jeff, haven't you? Uh, too many times. <laughs> Rutherford with the boot with just over three left to go in the half and a fair catch. You know, I thought that was returnable. That time there's a flag, too, on the play. No, no, just a beanbag. Oh, is that a just marker? Just a beanbag. All right. It's going down where he where he threw the uh, bag where, there, where, he, where he fair caught the football. And, uh, yeah, that was a premature uh, fair catch there. Come on now. I get ready for uh, possession now for Gahanna Lincoln. That is a home appliance solution first down with 307 left to go. I'm so used to, you know, seeing the other kind of the orange bean bag that we had last season. Remember, the officials did not touch the football last year. The center had to get it back in the huddle, then bring it up there, see where the bean bag was, and go ahead and put it down. And the officials never touched it. We never saw a measurement in 10 <laughs> games last year. Never. I haven't uh, seen one yet this year either, for that matter. First and 10 from the 27 yard line for Cummings and company hands it off. That is Hubbard and look at the gap Dior does it up to around the 43. He's got a nice rush there and a first down with three minutes left to go in the first half. Well, what a nice start for that young man. We've talked about him all night long that just a sophomore running back and does a good job finding that north and south hole and delivering the blow kept his pads low. I got to tell you this uh, running game at Gahanna is important to them. They've had a thousand yard rusher in each of the last four seasons. Ron Blackman a year ago in 2020 went over a thousand yards and maybe Dior Hubbard is going to be the guy this year who continues that great tradition for the Lions. He's got 12 carries for 48 yards before this carries. He tries to turn outside. What a job coming up from the secondary that time. Big number six. Jaron Ricks is really into this contest. You can tell, huh? A you know, really good effort, and, and you know, he did exactly what he's coached to do. You got to go to that outside knee of that running back and make sure that you do not lose contain. So he goes to the outside. He's able to make the play, and more importantly, was able to kind of stave off the block that was going on and still end up making the play for a loss. March it back to the 41. They need 13 yards now, so we're down to just about two minutes left to go here in the first half. One, two, three wide to the top now. One to the bottom. They now make it one back to the left of Cummings. Pressure coming. 
from the right. He rolls away from it. Downfield jump ball pass incomplete at the 31 yard line. And again, I want to clarify something in high school football. You can face guard. It is not illegal to face guard in high school football. Coverage nicely done on the play there as they intend to get the pass number seven, Tristan Cook Fisher. That's the second time in this quarter they've tried to get the ball to him. Good pickup in the backfield there and ball thrown behind the receiver, but nearly near about the back shoulder throws, nearly able to adjust and be, come back and make the play. You ever thrown option pass as a running back when you were playing? I sure did. Did you? Very first game I started against Michigan State. And? I am in the record book. I want you to know <laughs> I am one for one passing. No, no passer in Ohio State history has more, has a better completion percentage than I do. Kern. <laughs> Third down. Pressure from the backside. Can he get away? Cummings cannot. Boy, a little dangerous with the football. But now as your girl port, you contemplate a timeout with 138 left to go in the first half. We'll see. They have one remaining. Gahanna Lincoln with two. And there's the timeout. Groveport Madison will ice it to be able to get that ball back for another go. You can see the pressure on the quarterback. Better job by the defense getting to Maxwell Cummings. When he has time back there with that receiving core, he is able to find open receivers. And the solution there is to put pressure on Maxwell Cummings. You notice uh, there, folks, he didn't say how long the pass play was. <laughs> Me senses it was probably negative 12 yards or something <laughs> like that, but I do it. Here we go. T minus six days of counting down to the start of the Ohio State Buckeye football season. And the football fever is back with the best pregame tradition in what is expected to be another exciting chase for the championship. We love the football fever. Join Clay Hall, Rodney Dunnigan, and a roster of Buckeye Brain Trust Thursday starting at 6.30 p.m. on Fox 28. Helping you get ready for the Buckeyes and the Gophers. Jeff, are you ready for the Buckeyes and the people with bad teeth? Well, we're seven days away. What, last night they're going to go up to Minnesota and go play against Row Your Boat, and it, it'll be interesting because that's going to be a monumental game for Minnesota. Two years ago, they were able to get a, a, a great win against Penn State. Uh, uh, back in 2020, during the COVID era, they were not very good. Uh, the good news is they got a lot of returning football players, a lot of experience. Bad news is they were terrible last year, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Scott with the punt, a little pressure. Return going to start from the 23. Ricks has got room. Jalen up to the 35. Returns at about 12 yards with 126 left to go. All right, Groveport Madison. Passing has not been your forte, but what do you do here to try to move down the field? Well, keep in mind that they were able to make a big play by using that wing T offense. It is not their forte to be able to throw the football downfield, Randy, but they have had people open. They just need to make sure that Markel Holmes can get enough time to be able to get it to that open receiver. Indeed, he did have Jaden Sawyer, I think, alone down around the 10-yard line, overthrew him by about a yard and a half. So Ricks will check out. A guy that could also play wide receiver as well, too. Comes the sidelines. Let's see if he's going to come back on as part of that offensive huddle as well, too. Yep, no timeout, so you're going to have to go hurry up. They'll probably call two plays in the huddle here as they break from the sidelines. Coach Westcamp, great job for Mitch, assistant at Groveport since 2008, working with multiple offensive positions in the past, too. Wide receiver at Wilmington. His high school coaches, he's third generation Groveport, by the way, were guys named Ben Needham and Brian White when he was playing ball here. First down, Holmes. Looking long, left downfield. There's Ricks, there's contact. And they're gonna throw the flag. That's a tough yeah. one there. You know, they can have what I would call incidental contact if you're not trying to go ahead but, and establish better position. But, but we'll if you see. gain advantage yeah. from that, they're gonna call it, and that's exactly Defense. the decision that was made. And that's the right call by the officials that it was interference, it was inadvertent. They got their legs together and the defense is always gonna lose in that situation. I'm not sure where everybody is going, but it's a penalty from the line of scrimmage. This is not the pros, we're gonna mark it down there. So take a look one more time. Ah, uh, he fell down. They got, they got tied up. Looked mm. worse maybe than what it was. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. The defense is gonna lose that every time though. So mark it at midfield and take a look at the clock and it's down to 121 left to go. So first and 10 from there. So again, as Jeff alluded to, they evaporated their full allotment of timeouts in the first half. So clock will stop if you move the chains. Pressure pass downfield and it is a jump ball. Who's got it? It's going to be an interception. Remember, there's no such thing as simultaneous possession. Somebody has to have control of the ball and it will be Gehanna Lincoln who comes up with the football 
And big number nine, Romero Wells, making the pick. Well, he had the penalty of the play before. This time he comes up with the interception. This is excellent defense. Had the inside position all the way, and he fought the ball away. I don't know if the ball came loose. It's very difficult to tell if the ball came loose and maybe was incomplete. Let's see if it hit the ground. Yes, Randy, that's an incomplete pass. That is incomplete. The ball hit the ground. Nobody had control. So if you were angry about the interference, you got a huge break there because that ball should have been incomplete. But again, the officials, that's a tough one to see without having the evidence that we have here with the replay. Pass a little underthrown, too, as well as have the better position returning starter at cornerback as he started the second half of last season. So first and 10 now for Gana Lincoln from the 20. Cummings going to call his own number. That surprised me a little bit there. He's going to lose a yard or two with 103 left to go and ticking the first half. I didn't know if he was going to plan on throwing that ball or what. Looked like, I mean, it, looked like it might have been one of those shovel push yeah. passes again that they were going to try and complete coming up to well, make you, the play. You know they have a receiver that goes 6-6 that can go the distance. So Well, that is true. We have seen that. So it'll be second down. You see time evaporating here in the first half. And that receiver, Josh Cucker, top of your screen, number 84. Part of a triad set, one to the bottom, one back in the backfield now on the second out of 10. Keep it on the ground here. Nope. Cummings looking, rolling, gunning, passing, and it's caught at the 29-yard line. He was short of the first down, though. Yeah, it goes to Kane Baker. Well, you can burn a timeout if you want. They're going to need two. They've got two remaining. Kane Baker, I mentioned, three-year starter. I'm, imp he I'm impressed. I'm impressed that uh, Bruce Ward is continuing to try and gain an advantage here yep. with those two timeouts in his pocket. Maxwell Cummings, another good pass delivered on target on time and needed to get across the line there and able to get just about a ball length short of the first down. Kane Baker likes math, golf, and snowboarding. Did, did you ever answer my question? What was the yardage on your pass completion on the option? Do you uh, remember? It, it was decent. It was 20 or 30 yard oh, really? pass completion. It was. It was, it was a thing of art. I, I, I want you to know. I mean, I, so art through it. At least there was here. <laughs> he was not there yet. <laughs> it was, it was a little bit of a surprise. It, it was not a, a, it was not a pretty pass. I got to tell you, going in the air, but it was delivered. I heard somebody yell, "Pull!" Right? Yeah, pull. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> well, you know, Jake Stewart's our new statistician this year. He's just looking at us, saying, "This is what I have to deal with every week." So. Yeah. But we welcome him to the family as well, too. All right, timeout was taken. Balls at the 29. You know, Jeff, it's third and half the length of the football. What are you going to try to do here? Well, I think you continue to uh, get the ball downfield. You know, it didn't really matter. They're in four down territory as far as I'm concerned right now. They're going to continue to get after it. Whoop. Fumble. Ball Not came sure. loose. Cummings is going to just plow forward, get it across the 30-yard line. Quickly comes up the line of scrimmage. The clock is going to stop when they move the chains. Because that happens when you move a first down. Unless you get it across the 30. Unless you're running the clock here at Groveport where it continues to run. And they take a knee. Did he down that or did he take a knee? Yeah. I'm curious to see if they reset the clock. Because as you said, Randy, the clock stops while they move the chains. Yeah, you know, one thing you can do now in high school football, too, remember, not only can you spike the ball, but you can spike it from the shotgun formation now. The key is there that the ball can't touch the ground as it snapped back to you. So you can go ahead and, and spike the ball in that scenario. So second down. With 12.2 left to go. Cookers widest to the top, but they're looking the other way. And downfield the pass goes and looking for Hubbard at around the 48 yard line. 7.1 on the clock. You reach a point here where you just go ahead and throw it up. Ah, just put it on the ground and call it a half. Bruce Ward, I think, is going to take every shot that he can to try and get something in the end zone. That time the back out of the backfield, Dior Hubbard running a kind of an escape route out of the backfield up the sideline and never got himself really turned around to be able to see the football coming. Yeah, the wheel pattern sometimes is a difficult to run as a running back when you come out of there and get a little disoriented sometimes. Okay, Raymond is going to go wide to the bottom of this set now. Third down and 10 from just past the 30. And they're just going to go ahead and Cummings fake the wraparound handoff and he gets up to the 35-yard line and that will do it for the first half. So zeros on the scoreboard. And what a first half we had. It looked like Hannah Lincoln had the upper hand, but Groveport with a late touchdown in the first half to make this thing a contest again. 
at 14 to 7 at the break. And Jeff, a pretty entertaining two quarters of football action here in week number two. Yeah, I'll tell you that uh, Groveport's got to feel pretty good about the fact that they came off of a really disappointing performance offensively a week ago against Canal Winchester. They looked like they were sluggish at the beginning of the first quarter, but you got to be impressed with the way they, they kept coming and they kept their attitude going in the right direction as well. And Miles Harris is going to hunt down, if he can, the outstanding head coach of the Gahanna Lincoln Lions. I believe the largest high school when you look at population in the Central Ohio region as his team has got the lead at the break by a count of 14 to 7 in this contest. And the 45-year-old mentor of the Lions standing by with Miles Harris. Thanks, Randy. Coach Ward, pretty strong performance here, at least in the first quarter by your offense. How do you keep that kind of momentum going back into the second half? Uh, first of all, we got to limit our mistakes um, and, and just keep doing what we do. Uh, we know we need to execute a little better uh, and, and, again, limit our mistakes. Really good job there by the defensive line to kind of penetrate and slow down that offense. Same case going into the second half as well? Yeah, absolutely. They're a tricky offense with all the double handoffs. Uh, we got to stay eye discipline. Good luck to you in the second half, Coach. Randy? There's your music around Coach's Corner. Stick around for your Capital City Concrete Halftime Show at the break. A couple of 0-1 teams not playing that way. <laughs> Thanks for the salute. At halftime, Gehanna Lincoln 14, Groveport Madison 7. A couple of OCC powers locking horns on this Honda's Friday Night Rivals presentation presented by Columbus State Community College right here on the CW Columbus. Welcome to the Capital City Concrete Halftime Show. I'm Miles Harris. Now, the CW Columbus is a proud sponsor of the Ohio Education Association to put the spotlight on educators that are making a huge difference inside Central Ohio schools. Now, earlier tonight, Roport Madison High School, they actually held their 2021 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Now, one member of tonight's is actually somebody that a lot of consider the uh, Roport Madison High School MVP. I'm just uh, excited to be here, and every single day I wake up, and I, I love to come here. It's great to be a cruiser. A cruiser for life. Chris Downing has a special love for Groveport Madison High School. I am entering my 31st year 
at Growport, and I am a Growport graduate also. More than three decades of dedication to a school and community, investing in the lives of children daily, he says, keeps them young. But the real motivation behind his long tenure at his alma mater goes skin deep. I bleed red and black, and there's a reason why my license plate uh, is it's great to be a cruiser. His classroom, a time capsule of memories. My health classroom is honestly a 30 year history of Growport over the last 30 years. You have all my teams I've ever coached up in my room and my, my all state jerseys up on the wall. And I just, I love everything here. His loyalty, commitment to education and coaching, getting the overdue credit it deserves. You see, tonight, Chris's legacy will be enshrined forever. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's going to be a very special night. Chris is being inducted into the Cruiser Hall of Fame. It's something I've always wanted my whole life. Once a cruiser, always a cruiser. Being inducted into the Hall of Fame here has been a dream for me, so. And for their opponent, the Gehanna Lincoln Lions have an MVP of their own that is helping make tonight's game and the 2021 season possible. Our mantra is one pride, one family. For Angela Gunther and the team of school nurses inside the Gehanna Jefferson School District. Um, the last two years have been very challenging, to say the least. Um, in addition to our normal school nurse responsibilities, um, COVID has kind of taken over. Developing the playbook to combat COVID is keeping kids in the classroom and athletes on the field. I think there's a great argument to make them the real MPPs of sports, and I don't think our coaches, our athletes, or our parents would argue with that because they're going to ensure that we have the right data so that we can keep kids on the field, on the stage, you know, playing their instruments and in band. So, yeah, they're MVPs for sure. Now, challenges with COVID outbreaks are tremendous for school nurses at Gehanna and really throughout all of Central Ohio. Now, the game between Westerville Central and Westerville South was actually canceled tonight because of COVID protocols. Now, it's a testament of teamwork for teachers, coaches, administrators, and even nurses working together to keep the players on the field. Now, the Capital City Concrete Halftime Show will be right back after the break.
Welcome back to the Capital City Concrete Halftime Show. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of your scores around Central Ohio. Now we've got Watkins Memorial. They're actually leading Dublin Sciota at the half, 27 to 14. Out there in West Farm, they're actually taking on Logan Elm, and they're actually tied 0-0 in the first quarter. Delaware Hayes, they're actually having control of this matchup against Marion Franklin, 17-7. And then Mifflin is tied up with Bexley in the first quarter at 0-0. Circleville, they're actually leading. Those Mighty Mites are up against Southeastern in the second quarters. 22-0, 20, uh, the Mighty Tigers. And then New Albany taking care of business against Westerville North at the half, leading 21-0. Briggs, they're actually leading 14-0 against Whetstone in the second quarter. And then Thomas Worthington is looting against Worthington Kilbourne, 3 to 0 in the second quarter. And we'll be right back after this break. And welcome back to the Capital City Concrete Halftime Show at Groveport Madison High School in Le'Veon Bell Field. We're at the break. It's 14 to 7 in this contest in favor of Gehanna Lincoln. We welcome you back. And all of a sudden, it's windy here at Groveport Madison High School. And a very windy first half, maybe, but on the ground, not a whole lot of passing. We saw offense from these two teams. And that's something we didn't see much of in the first week of contest for these two teams. We saw some offense, most of it on the ground, but a couple big plays in the air for Gehanna Lincoln as well, too. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the things that uh, surprised me was how all of a sudden Groveport was able to kind of right the ship. It looked like uh, Hannah was going to run away with this thing, mm -hmm. but Groveport Madison came back and they were very 
uh, within themselves in terms of their game plan. They're able to make a big play and put themselves right in the middle of this football game. Yeah, it could have been 21 to nothing if it weren't for a fumble inside the five-yard line by Gahanna Lincoln. Take a look at the highlights from the first half, and we start with Dior Hubbard, who takes it in from four yards out, just like that. Golden Lions up 7 nothing in this contest. And then we talked about size, and he does have speed in Josh Cucker to the outside. Jeff, some 80 yards later, he yeah. gets a touchdown. We saw him try and get the ball to him earlier. This time, he surprised everybody, including their coaches, with his great speed. Took it into the end zone. Nice celebration there for the big guy. Six foot six, touchdown. And C.J. Barnett did everything but score on this play as he takes it in a little reverse action there from the wing. 59 yards, but just stopped short of going into the end zone. Yeah, it's ideal of what you're trying to accomplish in a wing T offense. They're able to make the big play and take it into the end zone here in the next couple of plays. Yeah, Jayon King then gets the score for the lone tally in this first half. For Grove Park Madison to make it 14-7. to Now, when you take a look at the magical numbers in the first half of this game, again, it's been six quarters now, and the Cruisers still have no passing yards. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They haven't even completed a pass here in this football game. Uh, no passing yards, obviously 73 yards of total offense compared to 258. Really, Grove Park Madison lucky to be in this football game. Jeff, there's a chance that weather could be a factor in the second half. Does that favor either team right now? Well, at, the, at this stage, we'll have to just see how bad it, could, it it's going to be but uh, you know we've got a terrific field here thanks to Le'Veon Bell right. who has donated the money to be able to have this uh, artificial surface so as long as we don't have that funny stuff that sounds crazy in the sky so hopefully we'll get a good solid second half going. Are you enjoying this contest in week number two? You talked about improvement. Are they seeing the improvement they oh, wanted to between week one and week two? Very much so. I thought this could have been a snoozer if these teams were as bad as they were in week in week one. But I think that's just part of maturing with young football players. I'm very impressed with both of these teams and how their coaches have prepared them for this game tonight. Yeah, Cummings has the confidence at quarterback from Gahanna Lincoln. Can that rub off on Groveport Madison as well, too, in the second half? We'll find out. Should be a lot of fun here in week number two and at the break currently it's Gahanna Lincoln 14 Grove Port Madison 7 this is week number two of Honda's Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the CW Columbus
get an opportunity to run the ball as a first-time quarterback starting. Well, there you go. And Martinez himself is going to keep it. And great yardage for Martinez and Moore. And Martinez on the first play of the game has a touchdown. 78 yards. And now McWayne's going to do a little double pass. Jarrell Williams wants to fire this one wide open. Engelbert, he's got it. Touchdown, Spartans. First down. Pitch play. Cut back. Some daylight. And that is a ticket to the end zone. Modded. Gonna hand it off. Boy, look at that. That's just putting your head down and going. Three shot is free at the 40. At the 30. He's over 300 yards rushing and brought down at the three yard line. What a run right through the teeth of the defense. Go across the middle. Got him over the shoulder. Catch beautifully done. Take it all the way for the touchdown. Pressure coming. Finally gets rid of it. Jump ball. Oh, was he in? Yes, he yeah. was. Here you go. Yep, yep, yep. Look at the First down, and did he catch it? Boy, so it's intercepted. 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 by Martin. Martin. Martin's going to go all the way for the touchdown. He's house. Oh, yeah. There's the play of the game right there. Yeah. Some of the great moments from across the country and great moments right here. We wanted to give you a look at the Gahanna Lincoln Golden Lions Marching Band, sponsored by Music Go Round Marching Band Sound. Music Go Round is ready to help you with all your instrument needs at any of their locations, 2630 Bethel Road and Gahanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza. So many times we mentioned this, that there are more people involved in the marching bands than there are in the football program. So a tip of the cap to those young folks that have to go out there and perform many times in the same inclement weather. That the football players do tonight the condition is sultry and that's the thing they're dealing with right now just a little bit more heat than normal but now a blustery wind has picked up as well too here at groveport madison high school but we'll see if that affects either team in the second half for gahanna lincoln solid play on offense and defense and their special teams have played a little better except for one kick where they call for a fair catch inside the five yard line i guess the rule of thumb has been call for the fair catch catch the ball and move on from there right? yeah i just Try not to make a major mistake in that uh, special uh, special teams. And, you know, the one thing that uh, if, if I'm Gahanna and they're struggling a little bit with the uh, fact they're taking fair catches maybe too early, I think you got to put two or three guys back on that uh, punt formation uh, to give yourself a better chance, have more confidence in terms of being able to run the football. Uh, but maybe at this stage all they're trying to do is, care, you know, fair catch it, get back to the offense, get the ball back to their uh, terrific quarterback, Maxwell Cummings, who tonight, Randy, has been really solid. If you look at his numbers, 9 out of 16, 180 yards, and 1 TD. Let's find out what's going on for the Cruisers as they head into the second half. Miles Harris has that story. Thanks, Randy. Coach, a little bit of a slow start there in the first half. What did you tell your team in the locker room to kind of get things going here in the second half? Same thing we're always going to tell them. Settle down. Capitalize on the, you know, our pass. They're daring us to throw the ball. Everybody knows that. We know that. We have to capitalize on those opportunities. And, and just get first downs here. We think we're going to be okay. Good luck, Coach. Randy, back to you. Miles, thank you very much. So that's the scenario for the Cruisers as we start the second half. Remember, too, Gahanna Lincoln had the option, so they deferred so the Golden Lions will get the ball to start the second half. And if you're Groveport Madison, I think you learned a little bit more about your running game tonight. Neither of these teams were, you know, very strong offensively. They combined for only 10 points. The one thing you're still looking for is if you're Groveport Madison, you need to get that passing game in gear. We touched on that in the first half and also at halftime, too. So you wonder if that'll be a catalyst. On the other side, I think Hannah Lincoln has more weapons than they initially thought they had. <laughs> yeah, they really do, Randy. The receiving core, I think, is very deep. And Josh Cucker, the big uh, six foot six, kind of a tight end slash receiver, uh, showed that he's got the capacity to stretch the field as well. But Maxwell Cummings has got to feel pretty good about his opportunity to lead this football team from the quarterback position. So it is a kickoff scenario for Crow Park Madison to start the second half. And Eric Gonzalez Rosales with the honors. And their turn going to start from the 17 yard line. Oh, that did not look good. Or turf monster. Yeah, I thought for a second, though, it was a leg injury for Tristan Cook-Fisher. But again, just a change of direction there brought him down. But, you know, you always see that and you think, oh, is he going to grab his hamstring or something like that? But now he looks to be okay and he'll head to the sidelines. And it'll be first and ten now for Gahanna Lincoln. Mark the ball at the 24-yard line. We talked about the leadership ability now. 
by Maxwell Cummings, the quarterback. The one thing I noticed, too, as a runner, he's a glider, too. I mean, he can take two or three steps be four or five yards downfield already. So he doesn't look like he's exuding that much effort. He makes it look easy. And I think that has an effect on the confidence of your team, too. Once you can get a couple of yards like that, it makes it look very effective. And also, from a passing standpoint, look what he's done. Now, remember, 80 of that came on one pass play, but still, he's now passed for nearly, what, 300 yards in the first six quarters. First and 10. Hubbard's got it, and he'll take it around the left side for a short gain of a couple on a home applied solutions first down, so it'll be second down from there. Good Michael, defense that time yeah. on the play, yeah, by Michael Robinson the third. He was their number one tackler in week number one. 5'11", 190 pounds senior playing that Sam linebacker. And I asked Coach Westcamp how he would describe him as a player. He goes, he flies around the field. Gain of three on the play, second and seven from there. Little dump across the middle, and they've got it across the 30, the 35. Boy, I'll tell you one time, I saw that before, too. Hubbard is not shy about running through pressure in the middle. He could have darted outside, but he said, you know what, I'm going to take it right up the middle, and Dior with a nice gain on the play. You know, pretty good job, Maxwell Cummings, being able to just locate his running back and getting open there, just a middle screen. Really good play call and great execution by the quarterback of the running back. Offensive line creating the opportunity. But Randy, as you mentioned, Dior... Dior Hubbard found a way to turn something small into a large run. Sometimes north and south is easier. Gain of 18 on the play, first and 10 from the 42. He wants to throw. He looks downfield and underneath has his man and still doesn't go down. That Barton is the tight end running like a tight end, running over people and getting across midfield. I could not see his number, but I'm just going to go by the frame and say that <laughs> has to be Barton, the way he just plowed through the defender to try to get him. And Jake got a nice gain on the play across midfield all the way down to the 47. Some guys can just run like a tight end. This is a guy, too, and Jake got much stronger and added muscle during the offseason, likes math and lifting and video games. So first and 10 from the 47. Played just about 90 seconds here in the second half. And a short gain right up the middle that time. Jeff is to do a good job of clogging that up. Maybe inside the 46 to about the 45-yard line. A little stutter stepping going on back there in the backfield as his running back Dior Hubbard trying to see where that thing was going to open up. But I like the fact that he kept himself going straight instead of what a lot of young running backs will do is they'll get frustrated if they don't see the hole open immediately. They just bust to the outside. And in many cases, that's where the pursuit will catch up with you. And Braden Gautier, the Mike linebacker who had one assist last week, makes the tackle on that play. Gain of maybe just about two on the play, second and eight from there. Approaching the 45 of the Cruisers, and this time Cummings calling his own number. Wow. Did not fool the outside at all, did he? Tried to turn the corner, and there was absolutely nothing there. Yeah, the important part is to make sure you stay home uh, with, with those fakes that are going on in the middle. You've got a responsibility of the quarterback. You make sure that you've got him, and that's exactly what happened. Frank Martin, the defensive end, big kid, senior, able to make the play. So mark the ball at the 44-yard line. They need to get it down to the 37 on this third down play, three minutes into the second half. Two wide and a wing to the top. Now pressure right up the middle, and how did Cummings get away from that? Still trying to make something out of nothing. Goes down the sidelines, and does he get the first down? He tight ropes the sidelines, and how did he get away on that play? That was a Houdini act that's going to move the sticks. Boy, wow. great athleticism by that young man. I mean, Maxwell Cummings, they talk about him being tracked speed and having that athleticism. Here's the blitz. This play is supposed to go left. This is all improv at this stage. It helps that you're beating a defensive end, but as you mentioned, Randy, watch this great shot by our crew coming right down the sideline. Does he step out of bounds? Absolutely not. Great first down. Great job by Dean Marini and the image video crew, and that was a bang-bang silver hammer from Maxwell there as he picks up 17 on the play. First and 10 inside the 35 to the 34 with 8.52 left to go. Baker in motion to the top. Two backs in the backfield. It's Hubbard. He's got the ball, and he's got the 30-yard line. He tries to back his way down to the 29. Well, you sense right now that, you know, we talked about this in the open, but if either one of these teams could get a big, long drive going, the momentum would definitely swing in their 
side. And I think right now, early in the second half, Gahanna Lincoln has shown that ability to mix up the run in the pass if need be. And the, the X factor this week has been the addition of Maxwell Cummings as a running back as well, too. Absolutely. They're, they've been very difficult to stop. And, Randy, they've got the ability to stretch the field, obviously, with those great receivers. But, boy, can they eat up a lot of clock running the ball. Second down and six from the 30. Oh, bad snap. Cummings retreating back to the 48. Guns it downfield, and the pass is complete. And they'll get it down. And that was a play, again, that was magical to make something out of nothing as Barton makes the catch on the play. And it looked like they were going to be trapped back near midfield as the snap goes to the left for Cummings. Not a good play, obviously, but the quarterback making a good decision, throwing the ball late over the middle can be dangerous at times, but he was able to deliver. The really good thing is, is that uh, Jake Barton came back to the football. That's the important thing. Don't run away from your quarterback when he's in trouble. Run to him. Timeout taken, 7.45 left to go. And again, they make something out of nothing. We had a player down for the Cruisers at the 28-yard line. And this is the part of the contest where you might see a lot more of the cramping situations creep into this game here with the warm temperatures we've had and staying over 90 for so many days, too. So we'll see what happens here as they attend to the injured player. And just a reminder, we would like to pause for a moment from our good friends at Columbus State Community College. Had some great times at Columbus State. I was the voice of the Cougars for basketball. Lovely Delaware Hall as well, too. So never forget those wonderful days as we have one of the cruisers hopping off the field to the sidelines right now to be attended to. I think that's number 47, is it not? Or is that number two? That's Delaney Wilburn. Yeah, that's the second time he's been hurt here tonight. So he will hop to the sidelines. I'll attend to him here. The ball resting at the 25-yard line. Not enough for a first down. It's going to be third down and just about one from there. Hubbard time. Nope. Cummings calls his own number. <laughs> Remember when you couldn't push the pile forward <laughs> like that? <laughs> Hubbard and company just helping out there as Cummings will just plow his way forward for the first down. You got right behind four. that big offensive Hell line. Yeah. They really like uh, uh, Declan hit the number 72 playing that left guard position. 5'11", 280. Just a sophomore. That's going to cost them. Yep. Flags on the play. Good hard count by the quarterback there. And Mr. Pitkin. Got the entire front three to jump there. Groveport. So encroachment is the call on Groveport. You heard that was 7-10 left to go here in the third quarter. So that'll give him a gift five and put it inside the 20-yard line down to around the 18. Boy, right now, if you're the cruisers, you'd like to make a defensive stand. And if you're... Bruce Ward and company, this is the textbook drive you'd love to see to start the second half. You know, they were concerned about dealing with the wing tee, and they were also concerned about coming up with some big plays of their own. And they've been able to do that so far in this contest. Cummings again. And inside the 15 and plowed out of bounds at the 14. Again, this is something they wanted to do in week number two, Jeff. They talked about the fact that, that maybe they had too much in the package to begin with. And Cummings is down along the far side of the field. Perhaps did he fall on the football? Looks like a cramping situation. Oh, yep. Yeah. Tommy Bakes would normally be the backup. We'll take a break as they attend to him with 6.38 left to go and our score 14-7 in favor of the Golden Lions.
high school football memories made right here on the CW Columbus. To the goal line. Going long for some breathing room downfield. Has Zeller in stride at the 40. Midfield. Can anybody catch him? This could be 98 yards at least. All the way. Skyler skies for the score. 52 seconds into the second quarter. That's how you go the distance so rapidly. Well, and that, how nice is that for the young man who came up with the interception to be the guy that ends up taking it 98 plus yards into the end zone for the score. What a trip down memory lane. Ten years of high school football on the CW Columbus. Tonight's memorable moment. Taking Jeff and I back to the last game we did in the very first season of Thursday Night Lights. And what a play it was. A 98-yard touchdown catch by Logan's Logan Elm's Skyler Zeller. What would go on to be a 35-19 win for the Logan Elm Braves over Amanda Clear Creek and beating the Aces. And remember the first two seasons, we fought to get a Week 10 game. And Logan Elm and Coach Bartholomew said, come see us. We'll roll out the red carpet. And boy, did they. I'll never forget the way they treated us. So number four was injured on the play two for Groveport Madison. That is Kyron Martin. So he heads out of the contest. And if Cummings was injured too, you're going to need a new quarterback in there for at least one play. And does Kahana Lincoln have enough players out there? They're still being treated yeah. down at the 17-yard line, so he He's can't come back into the contest. Yeah. Kane Baker is lined up there at the quarterback spot, which is... Yep, he's the middle man of the three. Right. Well, Tommy Bakes was injured in a JV game, so he wasn't available apparently tonight. So Kane's going to take the snap. Student body right. Find a gap. Inside the 10. Lost the ball. Bouncing around. And coming back the other way. Caught it. And just like that. What a big turn of events on one play as the Cruisers come up with the football in the person of big number 17, Sean Callahan Jr. That was a perfect play call. You've got your uh, all uh, everything back in there to be able to play quarterback. And Kane Baker takes the ball and watch how the helmet just goes right through the football and look where I am. Able to make the play coming up from that free safety spot, uh, Sean Callahan Jr. And that's the second time now that Gehanna has turned the ball over in the red zone. See if they're going to have to pay for it. Leading 14 to 7 in this game. And we're just about halfway through the third quarter, so Goport Madison easily could be down three touchdowns, and they have a chance now to get a drive perhaps and tie this one up for Mr. Holmes and company. Mark Hell comes out to run the offense from the 15 yard line. And the man in motion gets the handoff, gets it up across the 15 to around the 18-yard line, picks up about three on the play. Coming up with the football at the end of the play was Dylan Scott, but we'll keep it in the possession of the Cruisers. You know, the one thing uh, uh, Groveport Madison has been effective at in the first two games of the season is forcing turnovers, Randy. They had four against Canal Winchester last week. They've already got two of these turnovers in this game. And we have two more players down on the turf, one for each team. Well, we'll attend to them here with just over six minutes left to go here in this third quarter. Well, the biggest plays, the biggest schools, the best high school football, and you get to see it first. Thanks to First Scores on Fox 28, sponsored by Spectrum. Join Jay Richardson for your first look at the top high school football games here in Central Ohio tonight at 1045 p.m. only on Fox 28. So they are dropping here. On consecutive plays, we've lost about three players. There's one from each side still down on the turf right now inside the 20-yard line with 6.05 left to go in the third quarter. Great view here of Cruiser Stadium and Le'Veon Bell Field. He ponied up some $750,000 did Mr. Bell for this turf. Currently a free agent, I believe, too, in the world of the NFL as a running back. And do you think this is a cramping situation, at least one of them? Yeah, perhaps sure looks, Hannah Lincoln. It sure looks like it. Yeah. For the Lion player, they're trying to extend that leg right now. And now the Cruiser player is up to come to the sidelines. And that is number five on the play, who, if I'm not mistaken, is Curtis Barnett Jr., CJ, who had that 59-yard run in the first half to set up their lone tally. You know, the cramping player for the Lions still down at the 19-yard line. Jeff, I think I asked you this before, but I think we have to pass along the bad news that once again, 
Logan's Heroes will be returning to <laughs> CW Columbus, correct? Yeah, it's uh, it's the largest sponsorship we have of our entire season is Logan's Heroes, and <laughs> you continue to trash it. I just I cannot believe it. I, I will I will bring you in week number five, the five best schools in the Central District with the greatest chance of being able to go deep into the playoffs, and Randy will try and complain about each one of those five that I select. That's why I'm here. Tyree Johnson, the linebacker, the injured player coming off the field right now for the Hannah Lincoln Lions. I will probably agree with you because I know your expertise is second to none when it comes to that. That's why I've named you the football <laughs> professor. <laughs> second down and seven. Second man through, and not a whole lot there for Shaver and company, so they'll get it up maybe for a gain of a couple on the play. How difficult is it when you start the second half with the heat that we've had now to kind of keep everything together? And obviously, hydration right before a game is not going to help. This has to be a constant process throughout the week, right? No, no. And, and the other thing that they've got to keep the players doing um, is stretching on the sidelines, the, especially the players that that are part of the of the game, not the guys that are you know maybe third or fourth team. You're probably not going to get into the football game, but you know if you're one of those guys and you're not on the field right now, you ought to be spending time over there stretching those muscles. Uh, drinking as much water as you can continue to hydrate but stretch along the sidelines don't just stand there and watch what's going on third and seven for Holmes and company they have yet to complete a pass on the season there's a quick pop and they still haven't completed one falls incomplete at the 30 yard line I guess you know you see stationary bikes at times along the sidelines they didn't have those in your day but do you like no. that concept no, I think it's a good idea I mean anything you do, do to keep those guys active along the sidelines uh, you know and the, the, the tendency is just to sit there and rest and and be ready for the next play but you've got to continue to stretch those calves that's where the cramping is coming in is in those calf muscles Hunter Rathburn back on the field precariously deep inside his own 10 yard line and Raymond standing back at the 41 now for the Lions on his side of the 50 need a good snap here it nope. floats back no pressure at all nope and it hits the wind and it comes down but it takes a huge cruiser bounce inside the 45 did it hit that foot apparently not I'm going to be down inside the 40 at the 39 yard line so even with the roll it'll be good field position now in this contest for Gehanna Lincoln so we head back down to the sidelines and Mr. Harris is there Miles hey guys so I just came back over on Gehanna's sideline there and there's a lot of cramping going on really on both sides of the ball uh, both sides of the over the sidelines here and uh, the real interesting thing there as well is uh, honestly although the temperature dropped quite a bit Think about that delay that happened earlier on, and this, there's only been one water break in that first quarter. But, I mean, it's still a factor with the heat. Are you cramping down there, Miles? I'm not cramping. I did get my stretching in here before I started running up and down the sidelines, <laughs> but still, still out here. All, All right. right. You're a trooper. Thank you for that. And that's the one thing we should mention, too, because the heat index was too high. It was deemed that the start of this contest was delayed 30 minutes until the temperature and the heat index came down a little bit, and that's why we started this game at 730. So if you're wondering why we're early in the second half, we got a late start tonight. Baker's going to try to atone for the fumble. He'll go around the left side, and he'll get it up to the 45-yard line, and a wall of cruisers meet him right there. See him have both hands on that ball that yeah, time, yeah. right? There was oh, no yeah. way he was going to let that ball uh, get spit out again and turn it over. So he takes up the 45. They'll need four on second down. And kind of a stalemate of a third quarter so far. Gehanna Lincoln had the drive, but they had that fumble deep in the territory of the Cruisers and turned it back over. But so far, Groveport was able to establish something offensively in the first half, but really nothing so far here in quarter number three, right? There's Tommy Bakes coming in. So Bakes yep. running the show offensively. We mentioned that Cummings had the issue on the prior drive. And there's Coach Westcamp. Mitch looking on from the Cruiser sideline. So Tommy, apparently who was banged up in the JV game, is okay to go. And lost the hand on the snap. He's going to need some help, and he's going to give ground and be brought down back inside oh. the 40-yard line. Sometimes it's better to take the first hit than the third and the fourth, and he finds that out the hard way. And we've got more players down in the field. We've got two cruisers down that may have collided back at the 38-yard line. You can't uh, overemphasize the importance of that starting quarterback that gets all the reps during the week in preparation for the game. And the fact that Maxwell Cummings went down with the cramping situation you can see the snap a little bit to the left but then confusion in the backfield should I hand it off or just go ahead and take the football and at that stage just make sure you take care of the ball and come back for another down and you can see the ball actually did come loose there at the end of the play 329 left to go and a timeout on the field as we have another player down this time another cruiser we should mention if you go four deep at the quarterback position that man's son 
Brennan Ward, a 5'11", 170 freshman, is fourth on the depth chart at quarterback for Gahanna Lincoln High School. So timeout on the field with under three and a half left to go. And at the end of the game, Jeff and I will select the Zombiezy Bay player of the game. You heard me for their haunting performance on the field tonight. Get it? This fall, Fear has a new name, Zombiezy Bay. Check out their four haunted houses, two scare zones, and plenty of wild rides. Get your tickets at ZombiezyBay.com. Not recommended for children under 13 or Jeff Logan. <laughs> You know, the one thing you're talking about, uh, Bruce Ward's youngest, uh, that son, Brennan Ward, a freshman. Randy, you spoke to him earlier this week. You asked him, well, what number would he wear? <laughs> and he was like, I don't know. Well, it, in a way, game, I have no idea. I mean, a freshman, and you're not even it, – but, but it sounds like – from all that we can uh, glean at this stage is that he is the quarterback of the future. We'll try to get an update on Maxwell Cummings too. Blitz coming and boy did they shoot the gap in time. Apparently just barely. You almost thought they encroached on the play but you're going to salivate when you got a situation like this where the top quarterback is along the sidelines. So if you're Groveport Madison the table is tilted your way just a little bit Jeff. You were able to hold on defense actually a couple negative yards as well too and now you have the chance to get the ball back. Decent field position with under three left to go in the third. Yeah they went to that uh, Shotgun position. Kane Baker comes back there. He is the guy that's going to be in charge of running the offense, it looks like, from this point forward. Jeff, they've anticipated the snap count perfectly a couple times that you almost wonder if they know the snap count. Yeah, well, you're going to have to mix it up a little bit. And the hard part about doing that is going to be doing it with a backup quarterback. Dylan Scott back to punt standing at his own 26-yard line as soon as he gets an 11th man on the field. And he's being told where to be positioned there. There's a couple of the up backs. Readjust, snap a little to the right. He's got it. Pressure's on. It's blocked. It's knocked around on the far side of the field and fall upon by the cruisers inside the 25-yard line coming up with a football. Big number 36 on the play, Elijah Simmons. And there's the break the cruisers were looking for. Well, you get some of these injury situations, and it starts to impact your special teams in terms of who is the right package to have on the field. The punter took forever kicking that ball. A little rugby step there to the right, and the pressure was right there. They had the blockers in place, but too much pressure, and that is the same, Randy, as a turnover. It won't go in the books that way, but that's the same as a turnover as Gahanna has given them the ball again, this time inside the 25-yard line. It's going to be another home appliance solution first down with 2.16 left to go and deep in Gahanna Lincoln territory from the 24 yard line. Randy Reinhardt, Jeff Logan, Miles Harris, glad to have you aboard for this big game in week number two. Two teams trying to get back to the 500 mark after tough weeks in their first contest and both struggling on offense. But here you've got Groveport Madison trying to make it a stalemate. And this time a late handoff. Boy, and the ball's free. That did not look in sync to begin with. And it goes oh into the goodness. hands of Gahanna Lincoln as they come up with a football in the person of 48. Dylan Scott makes the recovery. All of a sudden, we're getting sloppy in this football game. And this time, Markel Holmes. This is kind of the double handoff situation right here. Fake came back inside. And again, this is just lack of concentration a lot of people moving in different directions. Markel Holmes trying to put the ball into the belly of Jaden Sawyer. Number 10, they've had some success there, but unable to get the play going. Yeah, Sawyer never found the handle. I think he got the ball up high and was trying to corral it. When he did, the contact happened, and the ball goes back now to Gahanna Lincoln with 2.10 left to go. Let's see who comes in at quarterback now. Let's see if Cummings is back in there or if they go with somebody else at quarterback. Or if they put they got Baker, Kane back Baker. There. Baker's going to be back there. And I think a steady handoff of the ball to Dior Hubbard is due. Yeah. A healthy dose. And they're going to get that. And Hubbard's going to take it up across the 35. Dior all the way up to the 36. So a huge gain on first down. Picks up nearly nine on the play. It's probably what the doctor needed. Oh, get, and guess what? And he's slow to get up. He's cramping. No, that's 29. Yeah, it's Hubbard. That's You're Hubbard. right. Yeah, yeah, it's Hubbard. And he's grabbing his left leg. I was going to say, just continue to pound the ball until he cramps. And you get one play. And once again, he is in a cramping situation. Uh, now, his, his replacement, Jalon Williams, is, is terrific as well. 
little different size running back at 5'6", 165 pounds, but number 25, Jalen Williams, is listed as the backup there as they try and stretch that calf. And again, it's the left leg, and Jeff, we've mentioned this too. Once you cramp, are you prone to cramping again? Oh, yeah, it's a nonstop situation, and all you can do is stretch over there, and that's what the trainers are trying to do. This is not an injury that, you know, is, is kind of treatable kind of a deal, that, uh, but it's just a debilitating kind of a situation that, uh, you know, comes as a result of this heat that we've had. So Jalen Williams will check into this contest in the backfield. One carry last week for 15 yards. Series number 25. Baker's the guy that's taking over at quarterback for the aforementioned Maxwell Cummings. And the team is facing a second down and one. You give it to Williams on his first play in. Nope, Baker keeps it. And pushes and pushes. Got about a yard and a half. He only needed one, so he's got the first down with 133 left to go. And this is a battle of attrition here late in the third quarter. Well, again, continue to just be simple with your backup quarterback in the football game. Well, that's the thing. You look at it, too. You've got Maxwell Cummings and Tommy Bakes and Landon Ringheiser listed. Brennan Ward fourth. And who's the quarterback backing everything up? Turns out to be Kane Baker, the wide receiver, three-year starter, the possession guy. Can catch the ball across him. They don't get the tough yards running as well, too. And he's proven that in this contest. First down and 10 now from just past the 38. He'll take it left. He'll get to the 40. Boy, you talk about wanting to simplify your offense. You don't have a choice here, do you? No, you really don't. Uh, Kane Baker is either going to keep the football or he's going to hand it off to Jalen Williams. Uh, there's no need for them to get fancy with their offense at this stage. They just need to stay consistent within themselves. You can see him putting the armband on that's got the play calls yeah they do huddle they do have the wristband and they haven't had to use it that much but they definitely will with maker and look at there's a football player he's got mud and dirt and artificial surface <laughs> all over his uniform there second down after a gain of six under 30 seconds left to go in the quarter <laughs> who's got it it'll be williams this time he gets to the 46 and that's about it so that'll be the last play it looks like of the third quarter with 14 ticks and winding down here in quarter number three. And we'll see what happens in the fourth quarter. Gehanna Lincoln on top of Droport Madison, 14 to seven. This is Honda's Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College right here on the CW Columbus. Ohio Education Association is proud to recognize Central Ohio's Scholar Athlete of the Week. Keller Weston is a football captain and a three-year letterman for Groveport Madison High School. He has also lettered in baseball. Keller meets all requirements for an honors diploma, earning three academic letters and carrying a 4.3 GPA. He is also a member of the National Honor Society and an Eagle Scout. Congratulations to this outstanding Ohio Education Association Scholar Athlete. 
and also part of student council and key club as well too talk about a kid that likes a challenge that is the person that keller weston is all right jeff we're back to action here to start the fourth quarter it is third down for baker and company from the 47 yard line they need just about two and a half whoop did we violate <laughs> i guess not Back Long touch count. with the hand up in the air. And Baker trying to find a gap. And boy, he's going to get up to the 48, near the 49. And oh. looks to be just shy of the first down. Do we have another cramp? Yeah, you cannot. I mean, we do. I'm going to invent an anti cramping device. No, a oh. cramp sled. I'm going to get a cramp sled okay. for trainers to take out because there's not a whole lot you can do other than stretch that toe back up. My idea is to take a sled out there, throw them on the sled, draw them over to the sidelines as quickly as you can and keep the game moving. That is Michael Robinson the third, the linebacker who's on the field prone at around the 45-yard line. Did he get up now? Would Looks you like be an investor in this? Yes, I would, Jeff. I would like to do that here, Shark <laughs> Tank Jr. So. And again, the conversation continues on the field. It's well, Maxwell, Maxwell Cummings. Cummings is coming back out. Taking a couple snaps. That's yeah, fourth down and less than one. And we mentioned Robinson still down, I guess, on the field inside the 43-yard line. So it's good to see that Cummings is back out there. You wonder what the situation was with him when he fell down and was hurt over there along the far sideline. But uh, he's back in there again. But uh, we have probably seen, what, close to 10 players yeah. with cramps or other injuries in this contest. And, you know, you talk about prepping for this, and you can tell teenagers only so much, Jeff, but sometimes you experience it and you learn the hard way. So hopefully that Robinson will get back up shortly. I want to remind you that next week, Honda's Friday Night Rivals will be coming to you live from Carroll, Ohio, for a matchup between the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs and the Jonathan Alder Pioneers. It all starts right here on the CW Columbus at 7 o'clock. Two teams that one made it to the championship game in their division the other made it to the final four so it should be a great matchup bloom carroll one and oh as we speak right now wade bartholomew and company today is superheroes day and superheroes night at groveport madison high school if you're wondering about all the outfits you see like the captain america and i saw catwoman here earlier tonight too i saw batman as well too i think i saw batgirl as well too so all the uh, superheroes being honored tonight Seven straight running plays now, according to Jake Stewart for Hannah Lincoln, because without Cummings out there, they didn't have an option. And now they're going to measure. Oh, my gosh, dear diary, for the first time since 2019, we have a measurement, and it is short by about a half yard. All right, now, I think you've got to believe that your offensive line is strong enough to put your quarterback under center. They've been shotgun the entire night. Do you have the ability, this is what Urban Meyer was was criticized so much for, that right. they never walk their quarterback up behind the center, and we got Maxwell Cummings in there. So watch this, quarterback sneak and have the fullback push. And shove it all. Well, remember, they did this for five yards earlier, and that's exactly what they do again. They were down by the 20-yard line going in from left to right, and they did it. Now, and that's exactly what happened here. They let's, get hope the first everybody, down. let's hope everybody can get up, and guess who is not getting up? Oh, boy. Mr. Cummings is still on the bottom of the pile. Yeah, once the cramping starts, you're done. You know, you got to stick a fork in him at this stage. I mean, it's over. You cannot continue to go out there and perform at that level with the cramping situation starting. And both legs being attended to now right past midfield. So it goes back to, I assume, Baker at quarterback. And if you do that, I mean, that kind of limits your offense because you haven't seen Baker throw the football. You assume that uh, Kane can do it, but I don't know if you want to put him in that kind of scenario. Plus, you're up by a touchdown right now. And so far in the second half, your defense has done a great job of shutting down that Grove Park Madison running game. And we'll return to the game after this message from our good friends at Music Go Round. Music Go Round in Columbus at Carriage Place Shopping Center and in Gahanna is your local music resource. Woodwinds, brass, percussion, strings, keyboards, and more. Music Go Round is your back-to-school destination with a huge selection of used instruments, perfect for students, hobbyists, and professionals alike. And at Music Go Round, you can trade in and trade up. Bring in an instrument you're no longer playing and trade it for one you've had your eye on. Located in Gahanna at the corner of Morse and Hamilton Roads and in Columbus in Carriage Place at the corner of Sawmill and Bethel Road. First down, and look at this, Baker with a big gap, Kane inside the 35, down to the 33, wrestled to the turf at the 32, and a big gain off the right side for a first down, and that keeps things going 
for the Lions now with 11-16 left to go. You'd love to milk about three or four minutes, get that second touchdown cushion. Bit of a high snap, but Kane Baker, man, is just a guy you have great confidence in that you can go to him at just about any position, give him the ball, put the team on his shoulders, and that's exactly what the senior is doing. Well, he's coachable, but he's got natural moves, too, when he hits that gap and he finds a seam and can bounce it outside. First and 10, a gain of 17 on the play to the 33-yard line. He'll hand it off this time, and Hubbard's back in there. Boy, he's a little loose with the football. Now tries to corral it and gets a nice gain inside the 25, down to around the 22, and he's got another first down for the Lions. And he able to hop up. There you go. Jeff, did you have a protocol or a plan that you did to keep from cramping up during a game? Uh, it was interesting, Randy. I don't remember having those situations, and, and, and part of it was the football season didn't start until... Uh, the first week or two in September, right. you know, then. Now, because of the playoffs being the way that they are and so many weeks in the playoffs, we've, we've moved now two games into the month of August. And Baker finding the seam nicely done. Again, he finds the opening, slides through it, and glides inside, inside the 16-yard line. Oh, the other and thing that's happened, too. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, that's an unintended consequence yeah. of trying to get more teams involved in the playoffs, moving the season up as, uh, earlier and getting into that heat. And some would say, too, this is the hottest August on record, too, that you've seen in recent decades. So there's Baker on the keeper that time with the first down to the 16-yard line. Numbers on Kane so far. It's a pretty good average there with eight carries for 54 yards. Second down. Under 10 left to go. 9.45 and ticking after a gain of a half dozen in the first down play. You almost wonder if Groveport's going to have to gamble on a play. This time they get it down to the 15-yard line, and that's about it. Short gain on the play as Baker will pick up maybe one. Uh, the other thing that's happened, too, the Harvin Index or the ratings, you know, they're going to govern this on five games as opposed to eight, knowing that there's right. some games that may not happen. For example, Westerville Central and Westerville South not able to play tonight. And COVID rearing its ugly head again, too. And a lot of times it's just protocol, but those measures have to be put in place. And we're hoping we don't have a repeat of what happened last season with the season that was shrunk down to six weeks. Here comes the blitz again. Baker tries to avoid it to the right, and he's going to do that. Get it inside the 15, but undercut nicely at the 13-yard line. It's a good play defensively to slide outside and make the hit. Going to bring up a fourth down and one, Randy. They've got the ball down inside about the 13-yard line. Jason Ninshelzer, who comes up to make the hit. I don't think you're kicking field goals here. I think this is absolutely four down territory. And again, Kane Baker finding an opening, and that is a terrific defensive play coming up from that strong safety spot, Jace Nitschelzer. Got a quarterback uh, warming up along the far side for the Lions. Big play here, fourth down and one with eight and a half left to go. Baker looking to the sidelines, getting the information. Charles Adrick, the offensive coordinator, you can try to draw him off. Let's look at the back judge. The hand hasn't gone up yet for the five count back in the end zone. There it five, goes. four, three, two. Going to take a timeout. One, and they burned the timeout. Bruce Ward on the field. Good job running the clock the timeout. Down. Yeah. With 8.08 left to go. So they burned the timeout, and they don't take the five-yard penalty with 8.08 left to go. Yeah, I don't think there was any intention to uh, run a play there at all. They're going to let the clock run all the way down. They had all their three timeouts remaining. So they burned the timeout with 8.08 left to go here. And it is time now for the music around sounds of the game. Take a listen. Well, I can tell you now that the guy that was blocking the punt was Michael Bohr. He's the guy that came through and there's the action, and you can tell there's contact. By the way, 36 was coming up with recovery, too, Elijah Simmons. But there, there's an art to blocking punts or blocking kicks like that, Randy. I've never done it. I was always the punt return guy. I, I, I'm amazed by guys that can time that because you don't go for the foot. You go for where the ball is going to be. Right. It's future tense. But also, you might give up a part of your body you don't want to either. Big fourth down play. Baker's got the first down. Skates inside the 10. It'll be first and goal as he just takes it to the right-hand side. They've been going to the right a lot. You think about it in the most recent drives, and a good job that time to get the first down. Likes of Rhodes and Vandemark and Flushi on that right side. 
You know, as a receiver a year ago, Kane Baker caught 23 passes for 176 yards. What a senior campaign, though, he's going to have here. And remember this game against Groveport Madison when he had to come in and spell the excellent quarterback, Maxwell Cummings. First and goal inside the 10 and inside eight minutes left to go. This could be a little icing here if they can get this score. The H back in motion there. And Hubbard gets the handoff around the right side. Dior looking for the goal line. Lost the ball. Did it bounce out of bounds? Lost the handle around the three yard line. Cruisers they're have the ball. They're calling second down. Yeah, but he was out of bounds, I think, when the ball popped loose or the ball at least went up. Well, Chase Ninshelder came up with a football. Twice already tonight, Gahanna has fumbled the ball inside the red zone. They had a punt blocked. They basically turned the ball over three times, and here again, there the ball was loose, but it did get out of bounds. Yep. Good call by the officials, but once again, ball security, an issue for Gehanna. Ninshelzer almost had his fourth fumble recovery in a game and a half. Second down and goal. Does Baker keep it simple? No, he hands it off. They've got the touchdown right up the middle. What a job by the Gehanna Lincoln offense. A little short staffed, if you will, and they get the touchdown, take it in. As Hubbard gets the touchdown, and there you go. There's another ringless roofing touchdown. Get your free estimate on a roof by calling or texting 614-761-ROOF. And raising the roof there is Mr. Hubbard for a touchdown. Yeah, big night for this young man. Able to come in. He's had the cramp situations, but you can see the read by the quarterback. Good job. Ball coming right up the middle. And give Kane Baker an awful lot of credit coming into this football game, being able to execute the offense as seamlessly as he's been able to do so. Gearhart with the extra point. I'll tell you what, Baker's got some good verticals as well, too. He leaped about three feet in the air after that <laughs> touchdown. So it's now 21-7 with 7.23 left to go here in this contest. Let's see if the Cruisers have anything left in the tank. We'll find out together right here on the CW Columbus. Yeah, the Groveport Madison Cruiser Marching Band performed earlier tonight at halftime. We're giving you a peek at their splendid performance. This look is sponsored by Music Go Round Marching Band Sound. Check out any of their locations at 2630 Bethel Road and Gehanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza. Clarinets. Who played the clarinet when they were growing up? Me. Thank you very much. Well, I know your multi-talented son was it was a was a bandy. I mean, he was that guy. There's Dior Hubbard's numbers: 20 carries tonight for 81 yards. Not a crazy average, but man, has he been solid tonight? Two touchdowns. Yep, and that man has been solid kicking the ball off as well too. You played clarinet. Yeah, I did. Marching band. Uh, early on, yes, until athletics got in the way. But I played uh, clarinet, and uh, I was the only boy at the time with 15 girls. And loving it. No wonder you play clarinet. Thank you very much. The ball is cradled at the 32-yard line on the play by number 27. That is Keller Weston, who is our scholar athlete. And so now, if you're the cruisers, a little sense of urgency, Jeff. You've scored a touchdown, but now you're down by two, and you need to move that football, and you need to get it back as well, too. And one of the, you know, the glaring elephant in the room at this point is that Markel Holmes, as quarterback, yet to complete a pass this season and I don't use that as a negative but uh, you know against his abilities because I think this kid's a terrific quarterback but sooner or later they've got to get some confidence in their passing game and it looks like they're a player short I don't see enough wideouts no running, and they're going to get one right now again this is the cramping situation where you've got some injuries and man you got to have your coaching staff 
getting the all readies. Jayon King comes in as a slot man. Wow, that was destroyed in the backfield. What penetration that time coming through was Kamari Burns to help just nail that. Yeah, how about Jabez Hill, number 32, and Kamari Burns, 40. And a flag at the end of play. They are significant players. Could have a helmet to helmet kind of a situation. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Diana. David Pitkin. He sounds like a guy who just tells it like it is. Yeah, you know that? Don't mess with me. May have been a celebration issue. Let's see what happens. Nothing there. I don't see anything there that would have elicited a penalty. It must have been something that we were not able to see, but it's going to create a great field position improvement for Groveport Madison. Up to the 44 yard line with another home appliance solution first down here. See if they can move it 56 yards. They need two touchdowns, but one at a time. Wide out to the bottom of the set, a wing to that side, wing to the top, and Holmes from the gun with one back in the backfield. And nothing to the left and even less to the right. Boy, great job by that defense just to shut that down. They try to turn the corner, Jeff, one way and then the other way. Nothing there. Once again, number five making the big play. That's Jaden Yates. Morgan looked for an opening and nothing there at all. He tried to go left and right, and big number 25 meets big number five. Yeah, I'm impressed with Jaden Yates. I think this is a young man that's got a great upside. Just a junior, or excuse me, a senior on this football team. No, you're right the first time. Was it? Yeah, he's a junior. Yeah. 6'2 and 215. Boy, I'm getting clarinet texts left and right now. <laughs> Second down and a dozen from the 42 yard line. They want to throw. Quick pop, and there's the completion. The first one of the season up to the 45, gets it up to the 46 yard line. Is that time they find number 10, that's Jaden Sawyer. So pick up a few yards on the play. Confidence booster, if nothing else. Third down across the 46 yard line. Jeff, I got to assume this is four down territory. Yeah, too. makes you wonder. I would, I would think so. Quarterback coming all the way to the sidelines for the play call, having to go all the way across the field. There's your quarterback, number seven, Markel Holmes. First completion tonight, first completion, as you mentioned, Randy, in the 2021 season. Josh Phillips, your back judge, still hasn't put the hand up, so they still have time to get this playoff. Third down, they need eight from the 46. Pressure's on and tries to throw it anywhere, and I think it's picked off on the play. Intercepted right into the arms of number 44, Tyree Johnson with a pick. Screen play and a great read by the middle linebacker, Tyree Johnson. He was their week one player of the game a week ago, and he read the eyes of the quarterback and stepped right in there. Watch again. He's sitting back. Couldn't have been easier. Right where he needed to be. Good pressure up the middle. Coming from Jabez Hill, number 32. But again, the middle linebacker doing the drop, reading the eyes of the quarterback. That you can tell is good film preparation prior to this football game to put himself in a position to make the play. Of course, Tyree's dad is Tabor Johnson, who coached at OSU and now with the Raiders as well, too. So he's able to make that pick, the three-year starter. He likes bike riding and African-American studies and the ukulele as well, too. So right now, if you're Gahanna Lincoln, you just like to milk some of this clock Run nothing but running place and see what you can drain here as Williams gets the carry. Jalon, a guy that we thought we would see a lot of early on, but I tell you what, Hubbard got the ball from the first quarter on, made a statement until the cramping situation, and then it kind of became a survivor test for both of these squads. But Williams going to get some playing time here. We also saw Chase Clemens on a couple plays in the first half as well, too. So a gain of a couple, call a gain of three, second out of seven from the 43. But now the clock down to 437 left to go. And this is where you keep your eyes on the back judge a lot more I assume exactly correct? let the clock run down continue to do that and again you've got your your uh, backup quarterback in the game I would say backup to the backup to the backup because <laughs> this is your wide receiver actually playing quarterback in the game because they know they have great confidence in Kane Baker and he's got it and finds a little gap but not much of one boy big number 78 trying to stand him up right in the line of scrimmage that's Ryan and Bark Larkham, and he goes 6'1 and 390, and, and Larkham just stood him up right at the line of scrimmage. They call him VB. You know, that, that last name, a little hard to pronounce, but they just call him VB. It's 6'1, 390, 
Try moving that. Did a good job standing his ground at the 42 yard line. So third down from there, but again, the clock, like sands through the hourglass, dwindling down. There's vital stats on Ryan. Great kid. Rotated in the D line last year, like fishing and science. On a third down and a half dozen. And Williams with a little burst has the first down. Gets it inside the 35 to the 34, and that could pretty much put a nail in the coffin right there. Yeah, Jalen Williams just with one carry a week ago for 15 yards. Getting an opportunity here, the senior. Trying to make it clear that he can deliver and be important to this football team. Officials timeout, we have another cruiser down on the field at the 38-yard line with 3.20 left to go. And they'll attend to him. Uh, both teams will go to the sidelines. You know, we talked about next week, and, you know, you mentioned last week how many people you heard from with that Upper Arlington Reynoldsburg. I was doing a car show, and more people wanted to talk about that game than about cars. It's because amazing. it was truly amazing to see that. We mentioned the performance by both of those teams. I think you can't say enough, too, about uh, Dijon Jennings and the squad from Reynoldsburg, too, and Mark Keyes, Gillum, too. I mean, he was such a force, and you thought that Reynoldsburg had the upper hand going to the fourth quarter, but sometimes you don't play to win, you play not to lose. Exactly. And I think that's what happened a little bit there for Reynoldsburg, but boy, hats off to Upper Arlington. They didn't back down. The biggest plays, the biggest schools, the best high school football, and you get to see it first. Thanks to First Scores and Fox 28, sponsored by Spectrum. Join Jay Richardson for your first look at the top high school football games here in Central Ohio tonight. At 1045, only on Fox 28, which is only about 45 minutes from now. You know, Randy, the other thing, you know, it was obviously a great football game. Two great high school football programs with great traditions. And the fact that we were there on a Friday night. And I think there's a thirst out there right now for live high school football with fans. And I'm so glad that we're able to do it. And I applaud the OHSAA for getting it done. Thank you, Doug Ute, the executive director, who was a guest on the show last week. First and 10, under three left to go. Baker to Williams, Jalon to the 30, to the 25, and brought down and around the 24. May have enough for another first down with 2.43 left to go. All right, now the has got to be careful. They're in what I'm going to call Fumbleville. This is where they have run into trouble in the red zone, taking care of the football. And I think it's just extra effort in many cases, trying to make that big play, but a good job that time by Jalon Williams covering up the football with both hands. Perfect situation. You didn't get the first down, but you got nine and a half yards, so you can almost fall down and get another first down, and that may be all it takes with under 220 left to go here in regulation. Baker looking back at the clock. Saw now Bruce, looking at the back yeah, judge. Saw Bruce Ward coaching him on the fact that that back judge will raise his hand. Yeah. And Baker to the right-hand side. He'll work on staying inbounds. The clock will stop or they'll reset the chains. Under two minutes to go now. And if you're Coach Westcamp, the one thing you don't want to see is your defense let down now and give up that late score. You'd like to see them make a stand, at least defensively, and shut down this squad. Because, you know, you're only talking about week number two. A lot left to go. Kane Baker came up a little gimpy on that play. You can see him there working his way back onto the field. Yep. Yeah. Getting the information from the sidelines from Coach Ward and Charles Andrick, the offensive coordinator. I knew him when he was at Capitol before he was also at Brookhaven and Beechcroft as well, too. First down and 10. They've got that with 90 seconds left to go here in this contest. Take a look at the matchups for these teams next week as well, too. High snap. Who's got it? Williams. Trying to make something out of nothing. And we'll get it down to the 15-yard line next week for Gehanna Lincoln. They take on Centerville. 1-0 coming into the contest tonight. On the other side, Groveport Madison taking on Kilmore, taking on Thomas tonight. Boy, very fortunate again. I mentioned they're in Fumbleville. Anytime they get down inside the red zone, Gehanna has a tendency to spit the bit and nearly came up with a bad play there. Got another cruiser who's gingerly trying to make his way to the sidelines. Time now to check out our player of the game with 104 left to go. Bruce Ward exhorting on his offense to stay focused and crisp out there. So Number of candidates for the player of the game for Gahanna Lincoln. But we'll take a look, and it is Dior Hubbard with a nice little spin move early, catching a pass and taking it in for the touchdown from four yards out. And approaching the century mark when we saw him in the fourth quarter and Hubbard around the left side. And you can see right now at 20 carries, 81 yards, we probably will not see him the remainder of the contest. So congratulations to him. 
Zambezi Bay and the player of the game. Good job, young man. Sophomore making a statement out there. Absolutely good choice for player of the game, but I'm going to tell you who the most important player of the game was Kane Baker. in this game, Kane Baker, yeah. because he came in when they needed to put the nail in the coffin. He was able to get it done, and that is a terrific job by the senior Kane Baker. It is career win number 75 for Bruce Ward as a head coach, and his team will get the victory, and they win by two touchdowns over Groveport Madison by a count of 21 to 7. They scoop up their football, and a strong performance throughout this game, especially by their defense. We saw better signs from their offense here tonight, but with the injuries, you never got that sinker that flow you were looking for for four quarters. Yeah, really, and I, and, and I was impressed with Groveport Madison. Uh, you know, in this game, they, they looked like they were going to get blown out maybe early in the game. Uh, but the, the one thing that they've done on defense this year, Randy, that they can be really proud of is they have forced turnovers. They're a very physical football team on defense. They've just got to be able to come up with better execution on the offensive side and a little bit more balance. And the congratulatory meeting at midfield between these two OCC combatants as Gehanna Lincoln gets the upper hand 21 to 7 in this contest. We'll take a break. The trophy presentation is next here on Honda's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Columbus State Community College on the CW Columbus. on Fox 28, sponsored by Spectrum, tonight at 10.45. And that's coming up just about 40 minutes from right now, so check out Jay Richardson, who I believe will fill in for you in week number four because oh. you have Ohio State responsibilities. Very nice. I will be emceeing the induction dinner for the Ohio State Sports Athletic Hall of Fame, which has kind of been a uh, privilege of mine to be able to do for the last number of years and looking forward to it. One of the guys going into the Hall of Fame, teammate of mine Aaron Brown remember Aaron yeah, Brown the yeah. middle guard played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers forever waited way too long to get chunky brown into the into the Hall of Fame but that should be fun and I'll get a chance in October to do the Ohio Basketball Hall of Fame where I'm the voice of that too so you handle football handle basketball we'll have the state covered so that's coming up as well too as they actually will honor two years worth of honorees because of course last year we couldn't do that so taking a look at some of the final numbers in this contest and one good thing for Groveport Madison they get some passing yards it's four yards but it's a uh, a tribute to the fact that they were able to get the passing game going at least only 71 yards total offense, so over 400 yards total offense for Gahanna Lincoln in this contest. Yeah, they've got to do a better job of being able to th be able to throw the football. Uh, we're going to go down to Miles. He's got the coach. Coach Ward, week two winner for Hondo's Friday Night Rivals. Winner, congratulations. Thank you. A lot of adversity going into the night with the delay and then also the cramping and all that other stuff. So what did you tell your team to stay focused without the ball game tonight? Uh, exactly that, stay focused. Uh, you know, obviously it was tough conditions with the heat and everything and cramping. So, I mean, we were, we were down a lot of numbers. So uh, our guys did a heck of a job staying focused and doing their job. First one of the season. Or right, let's ask about Cam Baker. How did he do tonight? Uh, Cam Baker uh, did a wonderful job tonight. Uh, stepping in the quarterback, uh, playing defense, playing receiver. Uh, he's our go-to guy. So, Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Enjoy the win. Thank you, sir. Randy, toss things back over to you. Ah, uh, yes, the orb is awarded yeah. to Coach Ward. And I saw the hint of a smile from Bruce Ward yeah. as he tosses it off. And that time they didn't fumble it. Did you yeah. that? <laughs> they weren't, they, held on they, they weren't in the red zone. That's why. <laughs> they're, they're already in the something. end zone. Well, you look at the total offense for Gahanna Lincoln, 220 passing, 205 rushing. So great balance for 425. Only three penalties, 35 yards, two turnovers for Goport Madison. Four yards passing, 67 rushing, 71 yard total offense, two penalties, 10 yards, three turnovers in this contest. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to have the turnovers. You don't want to have the block punt. But I think Gahanna's got themselves on a roll here. As you look at the final numbers here, uh, not many penalties in this football game. I think that is absolutely terrific. 425 yards of total offense. But again, Four yards passing, you got to be better than that. And last week we had over 1,100 yards total offense. So that was something between Reynolds and I think Parlington. Greasock is still running. Yeah, I think he is. Nobody's <laughs> caught him yet. So anyway, needs a license plate to go on the back of that kid. So as we wrap up this edition of Honda's Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College, we'd like to thank you for watching this game and remind you that next week Jonathan Alder is going to take on Bloom Carroll right here. And that should be a lot of fun as we go to Carroll, Ohio. I think the home of Lon Cheney Sr., if I'm not mistaken. So check that 
got a little trivia for you there. All right. So there you go. He was a man of a thousand faces. And so far, I think I've seen a thousand games with this man to my right. <laughs> but it's been a great time. We want to thank our great sponsors as well, too, and our director, Dean Marini, and the entire Image Video Production team. Again, we'll be back next Friday, as we mentioned, for that contest between Bloom Carroll and Jonathan Alder. On behalf of Jeff Logan, Miles Harris, Jake Stewart, I'm Randy Reinhardt saying so long, everybody, from Groveport, Madison, where the final score was Gehanna Lincoln 21, Groveport, Madison 7. I'll say it one final time. Join me. This has been Honda's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Columbus State Community College in one place on the CW Columbus. <laughs> <laughs>